Okay, we're going to bring the meeting to order. Before I do the pledge, let me just read this. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us here and uh, watching us from home. Before we get the meeting kicked off this evening, I have a sad announcement. Um, we had Michelle Cronin, our senior center van driver, had passed away over the weekend. So I'd like to take this opportunity before we get started, just a quick moment of silence in her memory and wish well and prayers for her family. Thank you. Well, as you can see, we've changed things up a little bit here on the board this evening. So I wanted to start off by welcoming Mr. Schultz as our newest board member. Welcome to the board. And uh, Mr. Ewell's here this evening and thank him for his two terms on the board. But we're going to, I know we you see was, there's a scratch out on the agenda, but we're going to take an opportunity at town meeting to uh, recognize Mr. Ewell uh, at town meeting. Is there any public comment? Anyone here for public comment? No? Nope. Okay. Do I have to wait till 7.05 to do the capital? It's not a public hearing. It's not a public hearing, right? So I can... It's not a hearing. It's got a stated time. I would, I would and, certainly... Uh, I, would, I would recommend it. So I don't know if we want to try to... Yeah. ...address minutes. Let's do that. Absolutely. Let's do the minutes of April 24th, 2017 regular session meetings. Mr. Schultz, could we get a motion on that one? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I move to... Uh, Approve the minutes. There right here is a motion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve uh, the April 24, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. So, motion by Mr. Schultz, second by Mrs. Manupelli. Any comment? None. None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at that meeting. Okay. Four in favor, one abstention. Right here. Uh, the executive session minutes for April 24th, 2017. Mr. Schultz. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the April 24, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. Bye. Second. Motion by Mr. Schultz, second by Mr. Manupelli. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. I'm going to abstain. Four. Form one. Okay. Well, let's do the legal bills. We have another minute. Mr. Schultz, you have a motion to approve the legal bills? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move Mar March. To, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for March 2017 in the amount of $18,292.13 as follows. Uh, Cobleman and Page, General, $10,403.63. Cobleman and Page, Labor, $259. Cobleman and Page, J.T. Berry, $4,828.50, and Thompson West Publishing, $2,801, for a total of $18,292.13. Do I have a second? Second. second. Motion by Mr. Schultz, second by Mr. Masseri. Any questions? Just So we manage all the Jerry, uh, Mrs. O Mrs. Rourke, she pulls out those expenses and charges it to the money that we had approved from town meeting okay. back in October of 2015. So we keep track of all the JT Berry related prom expenses. So when the right. sale goes through, we will take those as an offset. So Mr. Masseri, you had a question? Essentially the same question. Yes, they're being tracked, and we actually yeah. have a. Do you have the updated number? Uh, I don't have it off, off, offhand here, no. but it's something that we do monitor very closely. Yep. 
we can present it at the next board meeting. I can give you guys, I can give everybody an update on, we've been tracking the numbers right down to the pen. Okay, that brings us to 705. We didn't vote. Oh, we didn't vote, yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, one more question. Go ahead. Just a quick question um, for the TA. It seems like that's a high amount for that billing period. Was it more than one month's duration? Are we on track with the legal billing? Are we on track to exceed the earmark for legal billing? The, the short answer is it is for one month, and I would say to you that at this point we are on track to exceed the legal appropriation, uh, which uh, could potentially require a transfer at the June town meeting or request to the reserve fund uh, from the finance committee. <laughs> uh, but that's something that we'll analyze with the finance director in the next couple of weeks before the June town meeting. Okay. Yeah, that was, we were <coughs> working on that purchase and sale agreement for, it took a whole month for us to get there. With the <coughs> so it was a lot of time and a lot of great counsel by opening the page on that. Okay, ready for the vote, any more questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And unanimous. Okay, now it brings us to the hour 705 for the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, F the review of the two FY 2018 funding recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we uh, met uh, this morning to finalize our vote, and it's, it's being displayed here. Um, this is either our fourth or fifth year. I've kind of lost track of it, but uh, I can tell you it doesn't get any easier. Um, there were a lot of, in on the, the memo that I sent to you accompanying this, there, there's still some uncertainties out there, as, as you're all well aware. Uh, but we need to move forward uh, so we have something to present to you and, and to the uh, uh, town meeting. And we think we've got a, a pretty uh, comprehensive, doable proposal tonight, uh, due, due in, in large part to the, the, the hard work of our Vice Chair Liz Rourke and uh, Mike Gilberto, the, the, the TA, and the, the rest of our committee. Our committee is, consists of uh, our clerk is Julie Kopech, uh, Steve O'Leary, Secretary Steve O'Leary, former selectman Jeff Yule, Abby Hurlbut, uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee, uh, Mike Connolly from the schools, uh, Joe Foti, former selectman, and myself. I think that is. Everybody, if I miss somebody, I apologize. I don't think I did. I think I, think I got, got them all. Anyway, it was a good committee. We worked work well together. Uh, we've been at this since the, uh, the fall. Um, Liz and, and Mike uh, gathered a whole lot of information from uh, uh, the, the departments uh, asking for their um, their recommendations for what, what items we ought to be considering in the capital budget this year. Uh, we took those recommendations from the departments uh, and uh, spoke with department chairs, other department members, uh, listened to uh, any, any consultants that they had brought along to support their, their requests and to give us more information. Um, on some of the equipment or structural issues, we took a field trip, went and looked at the vehicles, the buildings, or whatever that you know we, we needed to see firsthand just what the issues were. Um, after we did that, all of that, and we had completed our review and felt we had enough information, the nine of us individually ranked the projects uh, from a five being the highest to zero being the lowest. Uh, we ranked the projects, um, sent all of that into, into Liz so we, we weren't sharing with each other um, at that point. And Liz then compiled the, the, the nine rankings from on each of the items, put them in a ranked order, and then we started looking at um, available funds either through, uh, through cash, which would be the, the uh, the, the free cash that goes in, uh, the raise and appropriate that goes in, and some money that we've proposed taking out of the debt stabilization fund, and how much we could fit into bonding and still stay within our goal of holding debt service exclusive of the little school roof at $1.1 million a year. Uh, we've accomplished that, and I'll go through that uh, later on. but. Uh, First, I thought we'd go through the uh, items that were approved, and they're on the screen. Uh, I think in your packages, you've got some descriptions of, uh, 
uh, of these items. If you need more information, um, either I can answer it or, or Mike or uh, 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 the fire chief perhaps if we get into questions on the very first item. The first one is communications from the fire department. This uh, first came in as a two-part 2018-2019 uh, uh, program to first to up, upgrade the communications equipment uh, between the fire station and the, the various locations in town where, the, where, where they've got um, uh, sites set up, plus another two that were, were contemplated that we're adding to it. So make sure we've got coverage from everywhere in town that they can communicate with one another. The, um, what was driving this is that Verizon is getting out of or has announced that they're out of the, the copper wire business and that's how we, we were communicating in the past. Uh, we had hoped that we could do it in two stages and put the, the infrastructure in place this year, the, the, the uh, communication devices, and then next year um, the, the, the request was for uh, uh, microwave antennas to transmit the signal back. It appears that the, the Verizon departure from this, this is, is going to be faster than we anticipated, so we're recommending that we get it done this year. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a big number, but uh, it's, a, it's a safety issue uh, for not only for the firefighters, but for, for the people in town as well. And this rose as the number one. These are in rank order on what you're looking at here. This rose to, to the, the number one uh, uh, ranked item among all of them. It, it uh, got almost a 4.8 out of 5 points uh, on, on, our, uh, on our scale. Uh, <coughs> the next item, um, yes, Bob. Yes, Mr. Masir. The, uh, th this particular item has bothered me quite a bit. And if Verizon is doing away with copper, and I'm assuming it's probably a T1 line that was going out there, is that correct? Yeah, Bill? we could have, could have done a T1 line. Um, the cost of the, the T1 lines, I think if we did a year-by-year -year contract, was somewhere on the order of $35,000. No, 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 okay, so it was just a copper line going out there. Yeah. It's a standard telephone line. Okay, so we have digital from Comcast and Verizon. Has anyone looked at converting over and having them run these lines out to the towers? I mean, the lines are in the neighborhood. I'm just curious. If you have so to come to the mic, I, if you don't. If you guys know, uh, this is Firefighter Carter. He's one of our radio specialists. I'm going to ask him to go to the podium if yeah, you want to mind. Okay. Thank you. So but there is one thing before Kevin starts to, uh, Kevin, go ahead, talk. This is presented by the fire department. This is a public safety venture between the fire, the police, and hopefully at some point the DPW. So that that really wasn't. Yeah, Bill, I I, under, I understand that. I well, just I just want to point that yeah. out. So thank you. Uh, the regular service that we get in our houses that everybody's accustomed to, whether it be from Verizon or Comcast, you know, you pay the, you know the. Forty, fifty dollars a month for your for your uh, internet cable box is not um, really a continuous duty, reliable source to get radio transmissions back across town to uh, the fire station. You'd have to have a number of different sites. We have six different sites. Uh, well, five but would add another one. And you'd have to have, you know, that same amount, you know, the $50 or whatever it is. But it's just the technology to keep the voice continuous and just not come across. Um, I mean, voice is critical with both police and fire. And, you know, that reliability is just, it's not there for that. And I, I called today to ask a couple questions exactly why. And, and that's what I got. It's just not reliable. And in our job, we need that. Okay. Any more questions for Firefighter Car Carter before he sits down? Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, the next item on here is the replacement of the, the rubber roof, the flat roof on the library. It's leaking and uh, it uh, needs to get fixed before it does, does more damage. Um, the, the third item is, is the amount of uh, funds from, uh, from uh, capital going into the town roads. This will supplement the roughly $508,000 in uh, Chapter 90 money that the state pr is providing. Um, the idea here is to get this on a schedule where we're, we're supplementing the Chapter 90 money by $300,000 a year so that uh, the DPW can program the repair of roads early in the spring. If, if they run out of money, they've got to wait until June town meeting and they've missed a good chunk of the, uh, uh, the construction season. So. If we can do this and do this on a regular basis so it's a dependable amount of money that, that's there, they can program out the, the roads that need to be done, get as much as they can get done before the, the fall, and then pick right up in the spring and, and, and finish up uh, and just to stay on track with the, uh, the road work that needs to be done. Any questions on this? I have a question. Do you have a list of the roads that are programmed for FY? Uh, I don't have it with me. Um, we can get that. Okay. Would, there is a study that looks out three years and, and uh, by, by our, our consultant that recommends the road. So there is, I just don't happen to have it with me. Yeah, town administrator, if you could. The question was, do we have do we have a list of the roads that are, that are planned to be done this year? Uh, so that was part of the conversation I had with uh, with Mr. Uh, Mr. Lafferty with regard to that. So this, as was I'm sure stated in the presentation, this three hundred thousand dollars will go in conjunction with the five hundred thousand dollars from the state for a total investment of eight hundred thousand dollars. Within this three hundred thousand dollars, there are two identified projects at this point for the upcoming fiscal year that the town has been uh, entertaining. Uh, first of which is an improvement on uh, an unaccepted road, Maple. Uh, Maple Road, uh, the northern end of it, and the second is uh, work on at the intersection of Devons and Hancock streets as well, uh, which is an area that's been identified in need of improvement. There'll be additional projects that will come out of this funding that'll be part of a completed plan, but what the department is asked to do is throughout the course of the spring to do an update to the pavement management plan in order to come up with a, a final plan for later this construction season. And the reason for that is because the Chapter 90 funding that we would be relying on won't be available to us until July 1st of this, come, of this year. So I'm sure the board is aware that this road program is not new. We've done this for years. Um, last year, we did not uh, delegate 300000 because owing to some changes in the DBW, they have not had the opportunity to use um, all of their uh, payment money. No, we know it's not new, but I have asked before, and I assume you have it completed somewhere, is what we did FY17. You're going to see that at the end of this presentation. I've, I've, we're going to give you a, a 16, 17, 15, 16, and 17 update of our projects and what the status is of each of those projects. Thank you. Continue, please. Uh, the, the next item was, is to replace a uh, truck for uh, the, the uh, DPW Highway Department, a uh, F-250, which is over 100,000 miles on it. Um, as I said, we, we do a field trip as part of our, our due diligence and not just listening to the, what the, the requester has to say, but go look at them. And we go look at them and you can see that you know, they've, they've really gotten their, their, uh, uh, their, their money's worth out of it. I don't remember the year of this truck, but it, uh, it's, it's up there. And, 2004, uh, it says. Pardon? 2004. 2004. So um, they're not turning these things over real quickly. So uh, we need to maintain a, an adequate fleet of trucks and cars and uh, uh, get at them before they, they become a big problem. Um, the next item up here, the, the, the school department, the elementary wireless infrastructure upgrade. Um, this this is, is, is quite the project, and I think uh, that uh, uh, Patrick Daly and uh, Michael Conley deserve a big, big pat on the back for this. There is a program in the state to help to, uh, uh, um, school districts to purchase uh, wireless infrastructure. Um, it went out to bid, and the bids came in at about $268,000 for the three elementary schools. Um, the state has a grant of, of reimbursing 60% of that amount or uh, 
uh, about $161,000, which left us with the $107,000. It gets better than that. There is another program called the E-Rate Refund Program, and Julie may know, know more about this than, than, than I do, but it is another rebate program that we've applied for, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty clear we're, we're going to get that as well, which is going to give us another $64,000, $63,000. So the net cost to the town for $268,000 worth of equipment is going to be about $44,000. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, Patrick and, and Michael spending the time looking for sources of funding, um, looking for where grant opportunities are available, chasing them down. They've been chasing this for a couple of years. This has been before the committee for a couple of years. They pulled it back last year because it was a little iffy. Uh, on, on the funding, but uh, uh, the state has, has come around and has given us a letter telling us that's what they're going to do. So uh, this is a good deal. It's great. And, and it's needed. We need, we need the upgrades. Um, $35,000 for IT equipment in the, in the, for general government. That is a, a, a routine item that we've put in just so that we can stay current on equipment and it's to replace aging equipment. The process is to the oldest equipment um, that is no longer functional is, is, is discarded uh, and then computers move, move down so that the, the quote power users would have the, 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 the latest and greatest and uh, others who, who don't have that great a need or as, as great a need as, as those folks would get the, the hand-me-downs but they're still functional operating pieces of equipment. But again, uh, you need to do this on a regular basis in order to uh, maintain a, a working inventory of, of computer devices. Um, the next item. Can we just yes. go back? On this particular technology part, in the past few years, we talked about remote backing up our system, our networks, off site. Yeah. Is, is that part of this number? I don't think the remote backup is, is in that. Are we doing that? So that's something that's under evaluation with the IT director. It, it's not at this point part of this particular capital request, uh, as far as I know, for the intention for a rollout there. Um, but we can ask for a report from the IT department. I mean, wouldn't that be a priority? Again, I, I think that there is an intention with regard to addressing the issue of redundancy, but I, I believe it's separate from this particular proposal. I could get a report for the board, though. I'm only going to speak for myself, but I, I consider it last time we didn't fund it. I was very concerned about it, and you know, we continue to push that one down the road. It, that concern is going to get greater. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to no. your group to discuss it. <laughs> no, and I, and I think it's 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 it would be an initiative of the the uh, the new IT direct director, and I'm sure that he's he's coming loaded with all sorts of okay. uh, better ways of doing business. So I would I would hope that that would be something. Because you're right, we need we need something other than take, taking a a reel off, off uh, yes. yes. It is, it is on his radar because at the cable access committee meeting this week, he, we talked about it. So there, a plan has to be put in motion for okay. that. No. So it's not in this particular. It's, it's not a capital item. because you're just not prepared. He wasn't prepared yet to. I can't speak to that. Or you just don't have it as its priority, Mr. Masseri. I believe that there taking a backup off site but it's physical manual mm -hmm. which you know I've had several discussions about because that ought to be automated there ought to be a, a box doing backup here and shipping it out to the cloud too well if we could and it was up on the priority it, list it was I dropped just, back because of the after gene passed I understand right. I do and I, right. I would like an operational the capital but that would be more of an operational expense than a capital expense, I think. Yes, it could end up it being depends on how you do it. charge. Right, so it's... Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item is there. It's the bathroom facility. Uh, we've got a placeholder in here, $200,000. Um, I think we are, are all up to date on, on the status of the bid um, and uh, where we're going, where, where I believe we're going from here. We're leaving this on there. Um, see what happens, um, whether we act in June or not, I don't know, but uh, uh, we've, we've left this on. This, was a, this, this is a bonded item for, for I believe, 15 years. Um, 
but it's there. Um, there's nothing. We're not recommending anything at the, this point except to leave it there as a placeholder. Okay. Um, the school department computer devices. Um, uh, this is a combination of uh, replacing the. Uh, uh, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I have my hand up. Oh, I apologize, oh, Mr. Yule. Um, Jeff Ewell, 427 Park Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Um, I do want to make a comment about the, the bathrooms, and I have another item that I want to uh, comment about as well that's in this, but I want to save it for the end. Is that okay with you? I want to save it for the end of their presentation. That's fine, Mr. Yule. Thank you. The uh, computer devices for the school, again, this is a an annual um, uh, request to do uh, um, two things. One is to uh, replace aging devices, and the other is to um, buy classroom devices. And I think that they're, 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 um, uh, the, the goal is to get to a one-to-one -one relationship between students and, 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 uh, uh, and devices. They're not there yet, won't be there for some time, but the, the, the goal is to, to keep on this track of uh, uh, e replacing what we need to replace and building in inventories so that testing can be done on on the computers and uh, and used for whatever classroom instructions is appropriate. Um, the next item is to replace engine three in the fire department. Um, the uh, this engine is going to be 25 years old. Next year. Happy birthday. Um, <laughs> we've gotten our money out of it. Oh yeah. So the the idea here is to approve it uh, this year. It will take a year at least for it to be built. So this won't come online for a while. But you've got to get out ahead of it. But the appropriation would need to be done this year. There is another engine coming uh, onto the the horizon, but it is it's several years out. Um, but this one is, uh, we've gotten good service out of it, and um, um, again, you don't want to keep things beyond their, their useful life, or they're, they're not there when you need them. And 25 years is a, a pretty good life on something like this. Um, Excuse me. Yeah. Question on the fire, just more probably for the chief. The new engine we're going to be buying, will it fit through the existing garage doors? Yes. Okay. Sorry. It'll be really, okay. I know that was a concern. That as the, the engines get bigger over time, the garage doors don't get bigger. Well, it's more of the storage inside the station. Okay. But the, our current station will accommodate this engine? We'll have to move things around. Okay. To make things work. Okay. Um, town hall, hall floor installation. This is, is like, if you've been over into the finance area, they put down a, a I think, a laminate floor. I think it is. I'm not sure what the material is. The idea is to do that 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 whole corridor, yep. um, and I think not the front, just the corridor. Is that right, Mike? Uh, the corridor and some of the offices. I believe the corridor and the offices yeah. in the town hall recreation department right. wing. Yes. There's a picture in the packet of this particular room, although yeah. I don't believe the intention was to do this particular room. Just for the record. <laughs> You all, you all got pretty pictures. I don't have them. <laughs> They're on my iPad. My iPad's home charging. Um, the the next two items are plumbing repairs uh, at the police station and the library. Um, uh, there are some leaks, um, and there is a need for, I believe, water heaters um, to be replaced. Um, and uh, we thought that this is something you need to, need to get on as soon as you can, and we're we're recommending we do both of these. Um, DPW Highway uh, replaced the SUV. It was on the originally on the request for last year, uh, and in the the, the change of the uh, uh, changing of the guard last year, and in, in, uh, the the director of DPW uh, that was that was removed. Uh, we need to get it get it fixed this year and get get a uh, uh, get the, get an SUV. Right now, I believe that the director is driving a former police car, um, and uh, he needs something that is is is, is a more appropriate to what uh, what he needs. I think he's going to be getting. Is it a pickup truck, Michael? Yeah, that's correct. That, that's correct. His yeah. uh, preference is for a uh, light duty uh, uh, pickup truck. Yeah. 
It wouldn't be to the same standard as the F-250. It would be more like a 150 grade vehicle. What are we doing with this vehicle? Pardon? What are we doing with this vehicle? The SUV is going to move down to... The, 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 the SUV is no longer... It's already uh, gone. It's been traded. It's already gone. It's, it's, it's already gone. The, uh, Police Department traded it. That's right. It, it, yeah, it got traded. So yeah. with regard to that transaction, because I think there's a, a piece of that story that's out there, but there's another piece that's not, which is that okay. the Police Department traded the vehicle in and transferred a sedan to the Department of Public Works, which the DPW is now using. It's not sufficient for the type of use that it needs that, that, that's required of it. But they receive the benefit of a Taurus, which I believe is five years old, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a 2013, so four years old, uh, which has been assigned there. That vehicle is likely, likely to be assigned elsewhere and is unlikely to be traded in. The next item is at the bachelor's school on the, the PBD Street entrance. Um, it needs some, some repair. There is a sidewalk that, uh, and walkway and, and um, uh, uh, the, the porch of it need, needs, needs some uh, replacement. It's a, it's a tripping hazard. Um, some of the, the wood frame around the outside of the, uh, that doorway is, is pretty rotted out as well. So that was a... Uh, a school request that we, we do it. We went and looked at it, and uh, uh, it was pretty obvious that it needed to be done at some time. And, and uh, uh, before somebody got hurt, uh, it's, it's a it's a drop off pick up spot uh, for for kids that aren't coming by bus. And um, uh, we thought that we should we should address it before we had a problem. Mr. Masseri, did the uh, anyone know if the bachelor project got closed out? I know there was a little money left over. And I know it's a while ago, but we'll have to get you the answer. I don't think anybody in this room. I thought it was, but I don't know for sure. As it would seem to me, if there is some more money, maybe it ought to be used. We'll look at that to make that repair. Yep. Yeah. We'll take the action to get that. Pardon? Yeah, Mr. Gilbert will take the. Yeah, he's got that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just. Quickly, the material. Are you put back the exact same material. It's it's going to be concrete, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, I mean the, the the wood frame. I think they're not. I think that uh, when we talked to Wayne, we looked at it. We asked if there was a way of, of using a uh, a uh, uh, PVC. Yeah, it's like 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 that. Uh, uh, to that that would wouldn't have to be painted, scraped, sanded, and attended okay. to as as often. It's more expensive, but you're done with it once you once you put That's it in. So yeah. we had we had talked to Wayne about about doing that, okay. and I don't think there was any historic district issue with it because it's on the back side. Yeah, it should. It and should and they could pretty much match it. Perfect. Uh, the asphalt hot box. Um, we actually have one of these. I didn't know until we went and did our our field trip, and it's. Is sitting in, in the, the, the the jungle behind the yeah. uh, DPW in the archives <laughs> behind the DPW building uh, hasn't worked in in, in some time. It's it, it's a good idea. It was a, what well, I think what sold us on it is that it's going to allow the 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 particularly the wintertime repair of of potholes maybe to be done a little bit better than they are because you're going to be able, you're not going to have to bring transport the asphalt someplace and then bring it to the, the site and by that time you've lost some of it because it's, it's cooled down. This will keep it hot and they can put it in the hole and patch it up and hopefully it will last until the, 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 the repair can be done in the, in the spring. Is that a Scud missile off the old one there? <laughs> looks Pardon? Like, it looks like a Scud missile. Yeah. It's not the old one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the no, final it's, item it's that we're recommending is um, the uh, from DPW Engineering is the stormwater compliance. Uh, um, uh, that we thought was we could delay another year. As it as it turns out, that is um, still hot on Mass DEP or, or EPA, whoever is is controlling this. Uh, um, this is, is wants to get this done, so we've got to stay in compliance and. We could put it off a year and perhaps get get have a, have a problem with 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 the uh, with the the regulator or or do it now and not have that problem. And the the recommendation was to let, let's do it now. 
we need to keep them pretty happy too. Yes. As we go through. So there's two, two point, almost two point two million dollars of uh, items that we're recommending for uh, approval. Um, I don't know if you've got the the not, well. Let's go through all the approval. Uh, Hill, Hillview Enterprise has one item, a fairway mower for fifty-five thousand um, dollars. That they're going to pay out of their budget. Uh, that's not going to be bonded. They can they can accommodate that within their within their budget. And the water enterprise, um, the first three things on there relate to the um, the uh, MWRA uh, transfer. Um, uh, I think that that first one we may be entitled to, or hopefully are entitled to some some grant money from the state or some money from the state related <coughs> to the very project that may pay for that. If that's the case, then there'd be no no funding needed for this uh, through the enterprise. Um, the improvements to the, the North Reading and the, the Reading uh, systems are, are in service of uh, going on to M MWRA water. The fourth item there, the meter replacement, you may recall, and we'll get into this when we look at the where we stand on older approved items. Um, <clears throat> you may recall two years ago, there was a request by uh, the water enterprise to replace all of the uh, water meters in town um, and uh, we we recommended the board approved on the in town meeting approved 1.7 million dollars for that uh, for that activity for, for a variety of reasons uh, not the least of which is the disruption in, in, in DPW over the, the last year but some other other reasons probably as well that I'm not aware of that didn't get done um, and so uh, our consultant, Weston and Sampson, I believe, um, we've asked them to look at it again this year, or DPW, or Water, Water Enterprise, asked them to look at it again, update their recommendation, <laughs> update the costing, and lo and behold, when they updated the costing, it came in at $250,000 more. The good news here is that by replacing the water meters, as, as we said two years ago when we, when we recommended this, um, there will be a saving in lost water because the older media meters don't register all of the water. So as the older they get, the less reliable they are in registering the water going through. And if they don't register it, we don't bill it. Uh, it was the, the um, estimation of the, the consultants that um, the amount of money that we would save in uh, um, uh, unbilled water would be greater than the debt service on the million seven and if I'm not mistaken it would be probably enough to cover the a million nine fifty um, so that this is a a, 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 a a project that pays for itself brings our, our water meters up in uh, to current status uh, it will allow us to remotely the, the, all of the readings will be brought electronically into town hall. Uh, we can bill more promptly, we could bill more often if we chose to do that. Uh, I don't know what, what, where that decision lies, but at least we don't have to send meter readers out to go out and read meters and then send bills out and all of the, the attendant frustrations with the, with the rate payers that if it was you know, two or three weeks later than you thought it would be in, in, in the quarter, and it's in the summer, then your extra water is going out, if you're using a lot of it, at the highest rate. So this, this is a way of saying we're going to bill on, you know, March 31st, June 30th, et cetera, or whatever the dates are, and you can, you can get readings on those dates, cut it off, and, and get the bills out. So, and, it, and it eliminates all of the, the human interaction of needing to, to uh, go out and read the meters. The other thing it does is that if there is a problem at a at a at a, a, a location at a house or a business where inordinate amounts of water are being used, uh, the the owner of that building can be alerted to maybe there's a leak you've got there um, and need, needs to be attended to before um, things get out of control. So you, you're getting getting a lot of information in addition to um, modernizing the whole collection process. Mr. Messier. How ironic, as I pulled into my driveway this afternoon, there was someone in the backyard. It was the water meter reader. Oh, you scared me. Though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question, though, is more to you, Michael. You know, we funded this 
a couple of years ago and nothing got done. And I know we ran into the issue with the DPW and everything. But how are we going to assure ourselves that when we go forward with this, it's going to get on the move and done? We have the resources that are going to be in place to get it done. Uh, yes. Are we sure the numbers that we've got now are substantial to get it done? As sure as we can be before we advertise and bid both components of the project, yes. And we'll speak to the timeline in the uh, status update relative to the FY16 projects as well. But uh, there, there's a pretty aggressive timeline that we have working with regard to evaluating the proposals which have already been received for the product itself. There's a, once we've identified the product that we wish to install, which I believe we set a goal for the end of the month, Andrew, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, that we would then be... Oh, there's he. <laughs> He's hiding me. That's why I didn't see him. Sorry. Uh, we would then be proceeding with uh, bidding out the installation as well, which is something we're looking to uh, initiate beginning in September, if I remember correctly. So uh, th there is a process that, that, that we are following. Um, it, it is a project that, while delayed, is on track at this point in time and has been for the past six weeks, despite this uh, issue of the additional funding that's needed. Um, this additional funding will allow us to, based on the projections from the consultant to Weston Sampson, address the system that we desire to have as well as to address all of the meters here in town. As we put in the justification and impact statement relative to the project, if we were to not pursue this particular avenue for funding, we'd have to look at uh, one of two options which are not desirable, either downgrading the quality of the system that we go after, which we don't want to do, or potentially uh, phasing in the meters and not doing all the meters in town, which we also don't want to do, which is the reason for the request. Um, Certainly no one is more disappointed with regard to the timeline uh, than I am. Um, there are a number of factors that go into it, uh, not just limited to the turnover in the department, but as well as uh, identifying the plan for implementation of the systems here in Town Hall, uh, which took far longer than uh, uh, I would have liked. Um, but um, in the end, uh, we believe we have uh, the right projected costs for the right project that will achieve the goal initially set out by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and the Board two years ago. Uh, Don, do we have a, pardon the pun, an idea how much leakage we have as far as the, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say that not capturing water? Yeah, it was, I don't, I don't have the number at the top of my head, but in, in the Western and Samson report, it told us that it's not so much leakage, it is the, the meter isn't, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, the meter isn't recording all right. the water not passing, not registering it. I'm going to say 11 percent, and I'm not sure that's the right number, but it, it was it was it was substantial enough to to cover the debt service on on this at that, and I think that's what impressed the committee two years ago is why wouldn't we do this? So it's clear we have a cost benefit by doing this. Absolutely, well, Absolutely. labor too. Pardon? Labor, labor too. Yes. Oh yeah, I mean labor and and, and to the into the the homeowners, the ratepayers as well. I mean yeah. that there there's some monitoring going on, and as I said, it's it's it's. Having gotten late bills and saying, yeah, you know, you get this three weeks after the <laughs> end of the summer season when you're watering your lawn or using it, it's different if you got it three weeks after March, yeah. okay? And what tier you're in. That's right. So it, 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 makes, it makes a difference. So yeah. I, and I think that, and it's not, not intentional, it's just, you know, the, 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 you've got to get people out there competing needs for their, their time. There's all kinds of stuff. And it just makes sense that this could be done uh, in yeah. an automated yeah, way. This should be on the fast track. Absolutely. Uh, the last two items on here are small items. This is a total of $70,000. Uh, uh, water main replacement on uh, unaccepted ro roads and GIS updates. Um, uh, these are things that just are, are work of, of the, the water enterprise that needs to be done on a reg regular basis. Um, and uh, uh, these, these items will not be bonded. These will be paid out of, out of the, uh, the operating funds of the, uh, um, of the water enterprise. So those are the items that we are, are recommending. And there are a few that we didn't. Um, not a, in dollars, it's, it's a lot. Um, there's a million, million one in there. The first two items you really could take as one. Um, the, at the, the library, uh, the, the blown, in, blown in insulation, that would be done at the time you replace the, you replace the rotted clapboards. So that it really is a $305,000 item. Simply we just couldn't afford to 
to carry it in um, in the, the the budget this year. Um, and um, the town administrator has, has told the committee that there there may be more extensive work that needs to be considered at the library uh, for next year, and so we'll, we'll have to take an, another look at this. Um, replacing car, car four in the fire department. Um, uh, again, it's a matter of, of, of money. This is a, a, a sedan um, that um, has been around a long time. It's probably a formal police car. This isn't, this isn't the one sitting in the... No, it's the original fire. Oh, that's right. This, that's right. We, the, we were going to move one down. Um, we, just, we just don't have the money to do it this year, and I think, we think we've, we've gotten an awful lot into the, into the budget. You just can't do all of it. Park Street Bridge replacement, the $700,000 is the estimate of our share of the cost of a million two with a, a $500,000 state grant. It's not clear when or if the grant program is, is going to come back alive. Uh, we, we're going to have to watch it, and we may, if it does, and there's a, a narrow window, then I think the, the town administrator is prepared to make some, some kind of recommendations in October to, to move forward to, to do this. I mean, it's, it's a nice contribution to the cost. It's still a big number, yeah. but to uh, get, uh, you know, half a million dollars on a million two project, um, not quite as good as the school department's doing on their, on their wireless, but it still is a very good, good uh, um, uh, aid to the, to the, the cost. And the final, final item was um, uh, the school department uh, would love to get a tool cat. And um, this didn't rank very high and uh, was not, not uh, among the, uh, the, the items chosen, perhaps next year. So in total, we had almost $3.3 million of requests um, on, on this sheet, on the, the yellow, first yellow stripe there, $3.3 .3 million of requests from uh, the, the, uh, the general government and schools. Uh, we're recommending doing 2.2 million of that and 1.4 we, we can't afford to do. Uh, we're also recommending that all of the, the only one and only Hillview um, item be, be, be done and that the, uh, uh, the water enterprise, that everything there be done with the, the caveat that the first one may not have to be paid for by, um, by the town doing any bonding. Just a question on the Hillview yep. mower. Is that going to be a separate Warren article? No, so this report is purely for approval purposes. For financial purposes, it's actually already carried in their operating budget request. Oh, okay. Uh, out of their so it's not an article. It doesn't. 16. That's correct. It okay. will not be. It's it in be. their operating budget request in Article 15. We had asked the enterprise, much as we had asked the the Parks and Rec enterprise this year, uh, to just give us a heads up on capital items that they they saw down the road, and so they've done that so that. We've got some idea of what's, what's, what's coming up, and this is what was the one item for this year. They're also meeting tomorrow evening, uh, tomorrow or Wednesday evening, uh, looking at a more comprehensive plan of replacing equipment there now where they're going to, some of the bonds will be dropping off in the next two to three years, and they'll be able to invest more in equipment uh, on a more regular basis. Uh, they're, it is a situation right now where they've got a 1992 piece of equipment mm -hmm. where they're being asked to spend about $4,000 on it to replace a pump. Uh, new replacement cost is 40000 But they're going to cobble through it again for another year or two. But then they're looking to get into an annual comprehensive uh, purchase or lease program so that more of the equipment will be replaced on a more regular basis. So how do we pay for all of this? Uh, I say I say the new guy writes a check. New guy <laughs> writes a check. <laughs> so well, that that would take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, okay. This table and it, it's it's very busy. It was a lot busier. <coughs> Mike, Mike, Michael Michael trimmed some of the the, the the more mundane stuff out of it, but it shows each of the years from 2018 out through 2023, and what we're looking at is 2018, and on the the page you were just looking at, we're, we're looking at doing $542,000 worth of items and paying for them in cash. And that cash is coming from three places. It's coming from the, from the free cash for uh, $150,000. There's $175,000 that's in the budget this year, so that will come from raise and appropriate. 
and then we're recommending transferring $217,000 from the debt stabilization reserve into uh, in, in making it available to pay for items. Um, then there are, um, in this example, and, and this number could change by $200,000 because of the, the, uh, um, uh, the bathroom, um, $1,635,000 worth of bonded items. Uh, $325,000 are in the 10-year category, seven thirty-five, dollars which includes the $200,000 for the, the bathrooms is in the 15-year, and the five seventy-five dollars in the 20-year 20, 20 is for the fire engine. So that says that we would do before chapter 90, 2.177, which is what we looked at before, and then we'll do another 508,000 in, in chapter 90, so we'd be doing 2,008,000. Um, our goal has been to, not just goal, but it, we've taken it as an obligation, that whatever we recommend, that we will balance it in such a way that the debt service, exclusive of the little school roof, does not exceed $1.1 million a year. And we've done that, and we've projected it out over the next five years. So if you go to the, the, the where it says ranking in the middle there, and you look out um, the numbers to the right of the, uh, from 2019 on, uh, starting with the five year at $350,000, et cetera, what we've done is we've taken and looked at the major projects that were presented to us in the in the the capital book for the next three years, slotted them into spots. Is a is a as I mentioned the the um, uh, the work on the library and that may go up, uh, but we that's that's into 20, 20, uh, 19. The seven hundred thousand dollars for the bridge right now is sitting in twenty nineteen. Tw excuse me, in twenty twenty. It's part of that million dollars that's there. It may have to move forward. Something else is going to have to move around. So this is very fluid, okay? Uh, but what we did is we, we asked the departments to give us not just their, their 2018 requests, but as best they knew today or that when they did this in, at the end of the year, what they thought they were going to need to do going forward. And we've concentrated particularly on larger ticket items so that we could slot those in here and then fill the rest with, we're gonna get the rest of the, the, the smaller or, or unexpected or the trucks and cars and stuff like that, that that's going to come up. And built, built out what we thought we could do over, over time. So, and what we've done on the, the capital spending on the cash part of it is said, we're gonna spend $500,000 a year on, um, on a, a five year stuff. So we don't want to be bonding that. We want to get, get rid of it. And we'll do that again like we did this year with free cash, with raise and appropriate, and with some transfer from the, the stabilization fund. The bonding numbers down below, then we scheduled out, put it into amortization tables, and, and, and put them into the appropriate years what the debt service would be in each of those years. Brought it all to the bottom and said, okay, where are we? And, um, when we when we got to the 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 uh, the total the total debt service, if we were exclusive of the, the little school roof, I keep saying that because it was a special deal. If we were over over the 1.1 million dollars, we made another transfer from the debt stabilization fund to get it get it done. Having done that, if we go to the next page, Michael, and I think this will just tell us where um, the, the 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 bottom half of that actually. This is the debt stabilization fund, okay? We're starting the year at $964,000. Um, we're gonna take in $150,000 from free cash in June. We're gonna take $175,000 and raise and appropriate in June. We're going to take that money then right back out of there to, to fund the, the five-year items. Uh, in October, we'll get another $200,000 from free cash. And then down the last two items are the balancing items. The 217,000 is what we needed to get to the $500,000 in uh, 552, $542,000 in items. And then the $88,000 was to bring the debt service back down to 1.1 million. And we go through this, this whole iteration with all of the projections from the table you saw on the previous page, 
and look at what does it do to the debt stabilization reserve. And it stays at about $900,000 for all of the ins and outs and all of the, 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 the balancing, the ending balance on that at the end of each of those years down, down the bottom, Mike, um, is about $900,000. And we feel that's, that's, a, that's a comfortable level. It allows us to do some things that we, that we, that we need to do. It allows us to, to go a little bit overboard as we did this year in, um, uh, in funding some projects, uh, particularly in the, the small item project, smaller projects to get it, get it out of the way and still have a decent reserve. Um, the reason you get, there's got to be a reason for the reserve, and this is the reason for it: is to to operate it as a as a true stabilization reserve. And what's, what we're stabilizing is the debt service. So that million, that's it for this year. So that million dollars you re referenced to the bridge. Yep. And the grant is supposed to be about a half. Well, a million. no, the one million is the, the seven hundred for the bridge is in that number. There are oh, other okay. things in there as well. Okay. Yep. But that's fine. The seven hundred thousand. Yeah. So. We have to bond the whole thing, though. Right? Yes. So. Uh, I don't know whether we have to bond the million two or we bond seven hundred. I don't know how how we'd get the five hundred thousand. We generally end up having to appropriate the whole amount and then deduct. Be like the thing. school. Yeah, generally. But we wouldn't. So we wouldn't bond it until it was done. So I would hope that we would have the money from the state, like we have with the school, and bond the difference. But we wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't execute that con that project unless we we had a guarantee on the grant, right? Yes. Yeah. That's correct. So that could get pushed out and pushed out. So what do we do in the meantime? Issues arise with that bridge. If I may, through you, Mr. Chairman, and the Public Works Director can jump in and correct me at any point in time, through you, Mr. Chairman, but um, essentially we find ourselves at a place where this is a unique bridge funding program for small bridges 20 feet in length and under. Andrew, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is the last bridge in town uh, of that size uh, that would be uh, in need of an improvement. Um, it's not as if the bridge, is, you know, today is at a you know, point of critical failure. However, it is going through the natural deterioration that any piece of infrastructure goes through. And we're not <laughs> certain as to when the funding might be available next yep. for this program. It could be five, ten years from now. So we're choosing not to wait until that point in time, but to take advantage of the funding so as well it's available now. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Yule, I'm just going to ask that if you have some new information that you didn't present at town meeting, that's fine, but I would ask that you try not to rehash some of the old. We, we are on a tight schedule tonight, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of string on this one, but if we're going to get into a lengthy discussion on it, and that's kind of a rehash, because the issue here is we're still waiting for bids to come in. We don't have any real concrete numbers, so it's kind of a TBD right now, but please. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it's a different uh, perspective now than, than it has been for the past three years. Uh, this, is, this is interesting. Uh, I had, a, as, as, the, as a former member and liaison to the uh, uh, CIPC, uh, I have, was involved in many discussions, and, and I, I do want to say that the work they've done, the yeoman's work that they've done, especially Don, uh, has been tremendous and, and uh, should be applauded uh, uh, for his efforts and the committee's efforts. Uh, but th there were a couple of things I kept thinking about uh, with regard to the um, uh, decisions that the, the committee made and uh, where I disagreed. And, and, and now that I'm a citizen, like everybody else, and not an elected official, I get to have a different perspective and a different approach, um, but the concerns are still the same. Uh, there were two items that I was, I was looking at. Uh, number one, I'd like to uh, talk about the computer devices for the uh, school department, which I think are a very good idea, and they've been doing that for years. I know since I moved in town, every five year, every every year they'd be allocating certain money, and that would and that was coming out of the school budget at that time. Uh, some were along the line before I became a, a uh, I participated in the CIPC. That was taken off the school budget and put on to the CIPC uh, program as a capital expense. And then that's where I have a conflict uh, with the approach of it being a capital expense. Good idea, but whether it's a capital expense. Uh, these are educational devices that are directly, directly related to the education of children, which is a good thing, but they are not an infrastructure <coughs> item that is needed to ensure the facilities are suitable 
suitable uh, for learning uh, successfully. They are, there are two other additional and appropriate uh, items uh, that could that require funding for the schools, which is the the batch, which which is built into this, and and the um, uh, which addresses structural concerns of the building, so it's an infrastructure issue, and it's a safety concern. And the upgrade of the uh, three elementary schools, I think that's vital. Uh, it, it addresses the infrastructure of the uh, of our wireless uh, system. Okay, and and so. So I don't believe that the uh, uh, computers as a, a learning tool that teachers use in class uh, is, should be on the CIPC uh, list of uh, 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 capital uh, items. The other item is the, is the school, uh, the bathrooms in the, uh, for the schools, again, for the um, football field. Uh, and I'm, going to be addressing this during the warrant item issues as well. I, I think that uh, knowing that what has come forward to us uh, the other day, I don't see how any other bids are going to be much different. I assume they are going to be different, but not much different. I mean, everyone was hoping that the cost for the uh, bathrooms would be lesser than what was being proposed. Um, um, I, I thought they would be more. I was using a number of 828 thousand dollars but apparently this one example that came in this one bid that came in was just over a million dollars uh, I have to say that the other bids even if they're less they're not going to be much less so I've always felt that the path that was being taken on the bathroom is the wrong path I think that I believe that it, it should have been uh, accepted to be put on school property and attached to the uh, facilities there so I don't think these two items should be uh, approved uh, for the uh, CIPC uh, uh, proposal. And why? Because there are other things that are impacted by this. Uh, you have uh, other options that you can take, uh, take care of. The, this is $260,000, and then you have the uh, library with the installation, and you have the uh, uh, clapboard for the, for the library. That's $305,000. But there's also $45,000 someplace, I believe, that the CIPC can find to satisfy that need, and that would be taken care of this year versus pushing it down the road and having more damage and for the repair at the library costing more money. Okay? Um, so that, that's one option. The other thing is there's some small items that you can do in lieu of the uh, uh, bathrooms uh, facilities and the computer devices such as replace car number four for the fire department and the utilities uh, vehicle toolkit for the school department. So there are, you know, you can still maneuver numbers around and, and I'd, I'd like you to look at that, uh, but the only way to do that is to take those two items off the table. You don't know what you're gonna get on what? June 1st, it's not enough time to get anything ready for a June town meeting, which is June 5th. I think, I think that the, the whole bathroom situation would be, solve a lot of problems if you just put it off the uh, June meeting and address, address it for either October or going forward. The state's being flexible for you to do that and it will allow you to uh, uh, get some <coughs> other things done that can be off the table now and be taken care of so that you can think about other things the next go around. So. Okay. That's what I wanted to share with you. That's Thank you. the perspective I wanted to give you. Thank you. Thank you. Any response? You good? <clears throat> I think leaving this, the, the bathroom then, I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. I've been pretty clear on that. But um, having, having said that, um, if we're going to do something, I think we need to make sure we've got adequate funds squirreled away for it. Um, and if, if we could do this for, you know, Total of two hundred thousand dollars. I'd be happy as a clam. And frankly, it, it probably it's probably is, in my mind, where it ought to be anyway. Maybe not two, but probably not. And I'm just talking about the bathrooms, but not at six hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. But well, that's having said that, I, I think it's appropriate to leave something here. I, I wouldn't spend it on something else, and then find out that we got to do something. And now we get now we get a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, the items that, that didn't move forward, I, I mean, they didn't, 
the, 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 uh, the library stuff did rank fairly high. Um, I'm not sure there's a, there's a huge danger of putting, putting it off a year, and if, particularly if there's more work that needs to be done there that we need to consider, then, then that, that, that makes sense. Uh, replace car four came in with a 2.22 rating out of, of a for, on a scale of zero to five. Uh, the uh, the bridge was low. Uh, the toolcat sorry score, sorry school department came in at 1.11 on a scale of zero to five. There wasn't a lot of sentiment for it. So um, I don't think if we were if we took the two hundred thousand dollars, I wouldn't be recommending things that had that little support. Because we don't need to spend everything. No. But but because you, because believe me, there'll be more stuff next year. The bathrooms, they're on a path. We're gonna wait for the bids to come back. We're up the bid again. We'll see what they come back with yep. and then we'll have to make the best decision we can with the information. And the particular bid that came in, my understanding is that I don't believe the the bidder met the full qualifications the what was being requested in the RFP so I'm not so sure I, uh, you know, I so I say we we stay patient on it the, 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 the bidder got uh, shall we say low passing grades uh, <laughs> at, at best uh, low passing grades <clears throat> this was uh, before we opened the, the dollar amount you know which again got a blew it out of the water anyway but um, so as we deliberated over the content of the the bid package uh, they did not rank very highly, but again, we only had the one bid. So uh, the committee and the people who were participants in the um, bid opening and um, thought it was wise to go back out to bid. And again, uh, lengthen the parameters as far as the time frame, because some of the uh, concerns that were raised during the walkthroughs with the potential bidders was the uh, time constraints that we had put in the RFP in order to have it done by the fall. And then um, the new proposal will extend it three weeks time period to get the bids in, and then uh, have the infrastructure in by the 1st of December and the actual structure there by the 15th of March, which is considerably more time. Um, and again, hopefully will uh, allow for more people to uh, look at it more seriously rather than just saying they've got 20 weeks to get it done from start to finish. So. But we'll see, and I think it's a responsible uh, approach right now to, as Mr. Kelleher um, stated, to leave the $200,000 in here to see what comes to fruition, you know, a few days before town meeting. And if we can move forward this year, great. If we can't, at least the money is still available to meet the mandates uh, that the state have imposed upon us, and we won't be scurrying around for more money, having already spent this amount of money. Right. So. And as Mr. Keller pointed out, some of these other projects did not rate very highly as far as prioritization. Uh, the library just has, has a little more uh, work to be done to quantify the work that needs to be completed there, so it's more appropriate to put it off until next year. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Well, the uh, only other thing we you. have is the, the, uh, the uh, scorecard from the last <coughs> several years. Um, you want to, do you want to talk about it, Mike? Yeah, I'll do my best to go through it. I mean, there's a lot of I can't even read it. There's a lot of information on each slide, but uh, going from the top, computer equipment. This is fiscal year. Uh, I'll start with fiscal year 2015. Would be easy um, if we shut a little bit of lights off. Here. Yeah. Sure. Maybe just talk about the ones that are not complete. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, so the turnout gear, $45,000 appropriation, which uh, the chief uses at his discretion as needed. So there's a balance in there. It may be less than that $12,648, but he's using it as needed. And moving right down, um, the townwide uh, st uh, dream system re repair says here, ongoing are Bow Street repairs, uh, castings along Havel Street, Lowell Road, and additional catch basin and man uh, manhole repairs townwide are ongoing with a balance in that appropriation of approximately $35,000. Uh, moving down, um, complete that there was a note that you know, we were asked to look at whether or not we could replace any additional doors for the exterior doors here at the town hall and the answer unfortunately was we did not have sufficient funds to do that but we did take care of the exterior double doors that were originally identified in the project moving down here the tower, tower hill anchor boat uh, repairs that was reappropriated at last year's town meeting a west village upgrade the wells not yet started uh, was for replacement of vacuum pumps uh, at the secondary wells. This work is not necessary at this time, but we have the appropriation available to us if we need it. I'll move on to fiscal year 2016. Um, 
uh, town road program, uh, Havel Street, Chestnut Street, Central Street, and the handwork project in uh, summer 2017, uh, uh, upcoming, uh, and then uh, driveway and aprons and sidewalks at those particular locations. Andrew, is that right? That is correct. Uh, scheduled to take place, so we had $100,000 in that appropriation from FY16. Uh, that was a year that we saw an increase in the Chapter 70, Chapter 90 money to uh, just about $700,000. We have a balance of $57,412. Moving down to... So you can't spend that money now, right? Um, I believe it's scheduled to be expended through the balance of this construction season, if I understand it correctly. Uh, which money? The 57412 Yes, we can spend that now. And as soon as the construction season opens up. The fire station improvements, and this is one of multiple funding sources for this project. Uh, work is ongoing. Uh, right now, the abatement of the first floor and uh, installation of carpet and tile on the first floor. Um, having occurred, um, and uh, Andrew, moving, that I can't wait to decipher that second part there. Moving expenses. <coughs> the administrative offices. For the administration of offices, but it says tentative, and that, that work's already occurred, I believe. Yes. Well, I thought they were going to pitch a tent and move you into the tent. <laughs> uh, tentative will be complete at the end of this year. Okay. And so the, we've expended uh, a chunk of the funds with a balance of $14,565. And this is something that we've tried to do in conjunction with the chief and the individuals in the fire department in as expeditious a way as possible. Um, the uh, sewer FEIR, this is part of our response relative to the MWRA project. Uh, that work is ongoing and expected timeline to be completed by the end of 2017 with the use of $150,000 uh, from that appropriation. And then um, the renovation project, uh, we have the ongoing renovation of the Human Resources, Youth Services, and Veterans, as well as Room 10 Conference Room. Um, those of you who have been in the town hall know that the Human Resources Office has moved to the new location in the old Room 10. The Veterans Office has temporarily been located in Room 5, but we'll move to the former Human Resources Office as soon as this week. And uh, the Room 10 um, at Youth Services was also uh, constructed within the Room 10, so now we have a smaller conference room in Room 10 with each location with a dedicated entryway. Um, for those who don't know, the biggest issue that we had is that we had the, the Veterans and Youth Services Office located within a larger conference room, and that created an issue for use of that conference room, so we've segregated the spaces to make it more efficient, although smaller. And then continuing in FY16, uh, building improvements, uh, ongoing uh, upgrade to the library elevator controls, repair of the library windows. Um, the interior ceiling in the senior center was repaired. The boiler thermostat replaced as well. So we're about halfway through expending the excuse me, halfway through expending those funds here. Um, the new townwide base map. We've not begun that particular project uh, for uh, GIS, and that's largely tied to the fact that we've had challenges in filling the GIS position. Um, we're hopeful, uh, as, as we stand right now, we've been able to preserve that position for fiscal year 2018's budget as a dedicated GIS position, and we expect that with that salary we'll be able to hire somebody to complete this project. Moving uh, on, the uh, water FEIR is ongoing as well with regard to um, the response uh, due uh, for the proposed uh, uh, and intended uh, move to the MWRA. The uh, water meter program, which we spoke to earlier, uh, the RFP review is ongoing with an intention to uh, award a contract no later than June 30th for the meters and to award in September the installation contract for installation to begin at the end of this calendar year and to be complete uh, one year from this August. Uh, the balance of $1.586 million on that, again, proposed to be supplemented by the $250,500 capital project recommendation. And for the fiscal year 17, project. Again, it's really small at the top there, but the, another component of the fire station repairs ongoing is the installation of cameras and monitors for the front door, replace, uh, replacing and installing the um, commercial dishwasher, painting of the first floor and stairwell, uh, asbestos testing and uh, the flooring, uh, testing of asbestos in the flooring, and then uh, moving. Um, we're early in that project. Again, we went to the first appropriation first, the earlier appropriation first, I should say. Um, the $50,000 town building appropriation from the June 2016 project, ongoing uh, five HVAC units in the town hall, 
uh, work in the HR department uh, as well as electrical and communication and uh, asbestos testing. Again, that's all tied to the larger shuffling that's taken place over the past few months. And uh, we've made quite a bit of progress with a lot of cooperation with the departments involved. Um, we've begun the computer equipment replacement plan uh, for IT. It may actually be concluded. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get an update in time for this evening's meeting. Uh, but uh, I know that Mr. Cooper has picked up uh, on that project uh, since his arrival a couple of months ago and has been advancing it. Um, intention is to begin the installation of the water conservation devices at the end of uh, 2017. That's a $25,000 appropriation project. I'm right here on this line. Um, again, the GIS-related work, uh, we've started uh, with the funds encumbered for the NIPTES annual reporting work, but there's mapping of uh, outfalls, uh, verifying outfalls, and sampling that needs to pl take place as part of that project. Um, we've begun the Reading Water Improvement Design and per uh, Permitting and Bid, and have submitted, the, uh, I believe, 25 percent design, Andrew, is that correct, for the Reading uh, water mains? 75. 75 percent, excuse me, 75 percent has been submitted to the town of Reading as well, um, and then uh, we'll be beginning the design relative to the North Reading improvements, which are, uh, while uh, more expensive for design, are uh, less costly in construction, as you know from the June Town Meeting warrant. warrant. Um, it says started under the pump station land acquisition. That's completed. We now own the land. Um, and then the water distribution, distribution upgrades. Um, started uh, bacteria issues at the end of the system, uh, solar mixtures in the tanks, and the pH one study, which I don't that I don't know what it means. <laughs> phase, phase one study. Okay, so we've expended uh, over two thirds of that appropriation. Uh, so we have a number of projects that have been, that have been completed, particularly in the past nine months. Uh, we have a number of projects that are obviously ongoing uh, at the same time, um, but uh, there's a lot that's happening, and unfortunately, we are making fortunately we are making progress with regard to these projects. I think I've hit all of them very quickly. Michael? Yes, sir. Could you put a copy of that in Dropbox? Yes, certainly. Because it wasn't in our Right, and but, but I'll, I'll talk with you offline about the challenges with Dropbox, but yes, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, make it available. I already know a little bit of it. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. That is our report. Well, I want to thank you and your eight other members of the CIPC. I know we only took an hour to go through this, and I know it took you guys a lot more than an hour to get us here tonight. So we thank you for your effort. And again, I know it's all volunteers on that group, a majority of volunteers on that group. So thank you for your time, your commitment. And, uh, and it truly is a group effort. Clearly. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes. if, I, if I may, um, just to echo your comments, the committee did fantastic work. It meets regularly for a period of more than six months in terms of reviewing the proposals and with, with each of the departments. And it's uh, all folks who are um, largely folks volunteering their time. A few of us work for the town, but we attend the meetings, obviously. And uh, there's a lot of technical expertise that's brought to the table um, in a variety of different fields for the discussions. Um, so I, I want to thank the committee, but I want to particularly recognize Don for pulling this all together. Um, you know, you, you, you put a lot of time into it, and I, I think that there was a particular meeting a couple of weeks ago when we were very concerned about our ability to do what we needed to do, and you were able to pull it all together. I just want to say thank you. This report is fantastic. The pay is good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're working on the time for it. Thank you. Okay. Great. We do have a motion uh, for uh, re recommending the uh, capital improvement plan that I believe Mr. Schultz should have. Sure. Maybe we can put the lights back on, too. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's going to be a lengthy motion. I move to recommend the following projects for the fiscal year 2018 capital improvement plan. They are as follows. Communications for the fire department, $535,000. The library flat roof replacement for town buildings for $45,000. Town road, the DPW highway for $300,000. Replace number 22, 2004 F-250 truck, and that's DT DPW highway for $45,500. Elementary school wireless infrastructure upgrade for the schools, $107,357. Computer slash equipment replacement plan for IT, $35,000. Bathroom facilities at the field for the schools, $200,000. Computer devices for the schools, $60,000. Replace engine three for the fire department, $575,000. Town hall floor installation for the town buildings, $50,000. Police station plumbing repairs for town buildings, $36,617. Library plumbing repairs for the town buildings, $35,046. Replacing SUV for the DPW highway, 36000 
The Batchelder Peabody Street entrance repair for the schools, $25,000. Uh, the asphalt hot box, DPW and the highway, $30,000. The MPDES stormwater compliance for DPW engineering, $62,000. Uh, meter replacement for the water department, $250,500. Water main replacement, unaccepted ways for the water department, uh, $45,000. And last but not least, GIS upgrades for the Water Department, $25,000. Second. Mr. Second. Chairman. Just purposes of discussion. Th through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, a, a notation that when this was transcribed, it identifies the bathroom facility at the field as a school department project. The planning uh, articles have all been under the Board of Selectmen. I believe that that should reflect Board of Selectmen as the uh, uh, department to overseeing the project. So after the Board votes the warrant, yep. uh, I'll make the change and give it to Mr. Furiello. So that it's correct. So as amended? Uh, yeah, I would suggest it be amended to reflect that the Arthur Kenny Field bathrooms be uh, under the custody of, uh, that, that the project be under the custody of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, so amended. Second. Second. Amendment. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. We have and Abby and Joe about four more minutes. Everybody. Everybody. So to make sure I understand this, so when we sign the June Town meeting warrant, we mm -hmm. can't make any more changes, correct? That is correct, yes. So are there any other changes we want to make before we sign this? <coughs> I, yes. I, I just want to, I want the board to, to reconsider the feasibility. Uh, we had it in as a proposed article, uh, the feasibility study for the um, location of the town hall, the fire department. We talked at one point about senior center, maybe rec center, veteran center. Just uh, consideration for that again. I think we had 75000 as the um, earmarked amount for that. And I, I, I just wanted to bring that up again and see if there was a... Um, well, I think we would... It would require one of the members uh, that voted and that were on the winning side of that vote to bring it back up, right? Uh, on the prevailing side, probably. Okay. I, I think the commitment was made to, to bring it up in October, which would give us a little more time to, first of all, vet it publicly as to what we're talking about, what we're conjuring up in our minds, and what would we actually be looking to study and do. And I think, that, I think it was agreed that it would be wise to have more public, open public discussion, because the only discussion we had was that one night when it was discussed the last meeting or two meetings ago. So well, this, this subject's been discussed for a long time. It's been on a strategic plan for a long time. Town yeah, but it hasn't, been, it hasn't been an agenda right, and we haven't had an open public forum as to, or public discussion, I mean, public discussion among ourselves as to really how is this going to fit with the MAPC plan or any other plans that may be out there. And I think if we try and dovetail that, it would be uh, uh, in everybody's best interest to to air it out and then move forward in a uh, more open fashion in relation to the public understanding, clearly, more clearly understanding as to really what are we got to be looking at and why. Well, I think, you know, if we're going to reconsider it, it should include, I think, more than just the town, town hall and in the fire department, I think we need to take into account the senior center and the community center into our whole, you know, what's the feasibility and what's the right thing? Where's the right location if we're going to do something like this? And what, what can we even afford? Uh, so I think it's actually probably a good thing that we did vote down that previous Warren article, but I do still believe that we should do a, a town, town buildings feasibility study. And we've been talking about this forever, and I don't think voting a feasibility study money to fund it we need any public input on it I think we need to get the process started get the experts in here get the adult supervision to help us narrow down what those specifications are and then we offer that up to the public to provide the feedback and that's what we need to provide them some information on what we're actually talking about here um, I, I think we've kind of put in having getting the public information or public feedback to me doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't understand where you're coming from on it, to be honest with you, because we shouldn't we be providing them the specifications of what these experts are going to come back and based on recommendations of the town administrator, based on the recommendations of the fire chief. Those are the types of things. 
Mr. Schultz. Yeah, being new to the board, I think it's important. We know we're going to have to build these structures at some point. I think we, just from a feasibility standpoint, we should see exactly what we can do, where we can do it, and all that kind of stuff. Because we're going to have, knock on wood, the Pulte Homes money coming in at some point within the next year. I think the longer we wait with all these things, and, and the bathrooms at the football field is a perfect example, the longer you wait, the more these things cost. And I think we should at least find out what we can do. I think the public deserves to know that. I'm not saying we're actually going to do it, but we should at least find out what's feasible. And that's really what a feasibility study would entail at this point. Mrs. Hilbert, if you could use the microphone. Could, could you just hold on, Mrs. Hilbert, until you have the microphone? We spent $50,000 on a feasibility study for the bathrooms, and we're still not there. $75,000 is probably not going to get you the answers you want. I sincerely feel that this project needs to be far more focused and far more vetted before you go out and spend money on a feasibility study. Just saying. Just picking up on something you said, Mike, and I, 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 I'm not going to quote you exactly, but you were talking about you refer to it as it. Do we even know what it is yet? I, 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 and I, this came up when we talked about this, I think it was at the Saturday meeting. Um, it's probably desirable to do those things, but we don't know what it is that we really want to do. And I, and I think the time should be spent analyzing what our needs are and putting together something that says, all right, what we really need to pick, pick an example is a fire station, a multi-generational uh, community center, and a town hall. Mm -hmm. Okay, 10 gazillion dollars, and you can't go forward with it. But I think you need to go through that exercise first of what are the needs and where, what are the opportunities to, to, to satisfy those needs before you go and spend money on some consultant to come in and do a feasibility study. The feasibility study is going to be the land is suitable for building it. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 you don't have what you, you want now. I just think we ought to be driving that bus and we ought to decide what it is we want before we bring somebody in to tell us what we want. And I think my own personal opinion of the bathrooms, I think that's how we get into the situation we're in there. I think we just kept designing and designing and designing without having in mind what it is that we really, really need here. Well, and I, think I, and I just think spending the money and spending $75,000 or $100,000 or whatever it is to do a good feasibility study makes a lot of sense. But I think you've got to do your homework first and say, what are we doing a feasibility study for? What, what is it we're trying to accomplish here? And I think, you know, you guys and with input from, from, uh, from the town, uh, I think uh, that would, would inform the, the decision. But just to go off and say, if we spend the money, we're going to get what we want, I don't think we know what we want. I, d I just want to comment on that, that I think it's, I think from what I've heard, and it's a combination of things, for example, the Saturday budget here, and we heard there's a def definitive need for a fire station in this area of the town, and there was a study done on that many moons ago that's now outdated, so we needed a newer study done on that. Uh, we hear about three departments pushed into one area in this building, and we're spending $50,000 on flooring in this building, on a building that we, can, we all recognize and know is too small to house even the departments that we have, and we know there's a need for a place for seniors, and we know there's a need for like you said, a multi-generational recreational facility. I didn't say recreation, I said community facility. A community facility. Yes. Or a recreational facility. I said community aspect. facility. Yeah. <laughs> There's community a distinction facility. there, I'm making sure. it. Sure. Well, you know, I was thinking of the presentation on the parks and rec facility that we have that needs work invested into it as well. So yeah, I we think- We come out of the enterprise, though. I think it's important for us to look at it. And that was my point in bringing it back up is that this study, and it, it's not eliminating public input. I mean, that's not the goal, is to eliminate the public's no input into it. I think it's to look at what do we have for stock, where could these things 
what's, where is it feasible to build these things? I think, I think feas as I said, I'll repeat myself, but feasibility study is the appropriate time and place for it. I just don't think we're there. I think we need to gather our own thoughts on what it is we're trying to do because you can't do everything. Okay, so you've got to think about what are all of the needs and then kind of c c let that congeal a little bit and then, then decide, all right, these are all of our needs. Now let's get a feasibility. How do we get this done? But I think you've got to drive the bus in determining what the needs are first and not put that in the hands of a consultant that's just going to come in and take your money and say, 75000 is gone and you're not there yet. I just think it's too soon. Mr. Masseri. Uh, I agree with uh, Dawn that, you know, even if we decide to take that one article and put it in the October town meeting after we've had further discussion, but I, I think it's, it goes beyond those two items, the fire station and the town hall, and it's not like I'm interested in burying it. I, I just think we ought to maybe take a meeting this summer. I, our schedule's been so crazy with so many things that we really haven't had a, a good discussion about what we ought to be doing and uh, see how we can prioritize it, maybe even identify some of the areas where these things would go before we go off and say, we're going to spend some money to analyze now what, to get more detail to get you know, to the bottom of what these kinds of things are going to cost. And I see no, uh, no real problem with letting you wait until October town meeting. It's only a few more months after June town meeting. You think about it, and uh, you know our summer schedule gets slowed down a little bit anyway. So you know, we ought to just plan on spending a little bit of time, or create a subcommittee to put some time and effort into it to make a presentation and, and go forward. If you want to do it that way, Michael. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't mind waiting. Okay, I don't mind waiting, but we we all know what the issues are. You talk to the town administrator; he he clearly tell you. What his challenges are with his building here. Oh, I you agree. You can talk to the fire chief. And I agree. He's got, he has more reports. That's not the issue. But if you hear me out, we've done a lot of what you're talking about, and I think we've come to the point now where we're at a crossroads, and we need to make, we got to get some concrete plans in place that are logical, so we know what's affordable and what's logical and what's realistic for us to take on. Um, we can talk about it more. We can kick this down the road and we'll go to October town meeting, and then. It will take us three to four months after to October town meeting to really even get anything in place, get an RFP on the street, get some in here. So, you know, you can keep kicking this down the road, but the challenges associated with your department heads and your town administrator are not going to get any easier. And just because, and I want to make sure everyone's clear on this, I'm not looking to spend all the, J the JT Berry money because it's coming in or potentially coming in. I'm trying to plan, some, finally put something in place so when we have the opportunity, to do something right for this town, we, we're prepared and, and we don't rush off and make big mistakes. That's all I'm trying to do, and it takes time. This could take three months, I could take, I mean, three years for us to get this settled and what we want to do for the town hall, for the fire department, for the community center, for our seniors. So I'm going to move on on this subject, Abby, and I'll give you another opportunity another night, but I, I'd like to move on. We've had two studies done. What? We've had two studies done. Right. But we had one a year ago, which included increasing the bay size for new fire trucks. Yes. And increasing the door. So That's some of the stuff has been done. We know. No, we know. It's sitting in, sitting in a filing cabinet. That's what I'm trying to say. We can talk about it more, but we, we've done a lot of work. I, I think, Mr. Chair, I think the... Um, one of the points that I was trying to make at the last meeting was, again, I don't believe that we've reached a consensus amongst ourselves yet. And until we do that, I don't think we should be moving forward and spending the money. That's all. And again, I'm not disagreeing with anything you say in relation to, you know, having the need to have our ducks in a row here before we go out and ask the public to spend some money on um, any project or projects. Uh, but I think we need to come to a consensus first as to you know, what are our needs, you know, and then what's our appetite and ability to pay for what to meet our needs. And again, we may be at a point where we can't afford to meet all of our needs. And yeah. We have to live with what we have. So I think, I think we have to uh, 
come to a consensus amongst ourselves first before we go out and ask for any feasibility study. What I would like us to do is make sure we gather the lessons learned when we did the high school and the middle school, lessons learned when we did the bathrooms, the lessons learned when we did the batch. We should learn the, what was good and what was bad in those processes and try to capture all the good and make sure when we go off to do this feasibility study and then to go off and do implementation. I think, I think we, we'll have a hard time getting some of the people with all that knowledge to volunteer, <laughs> right, Don? <laughs> but I mean, we should, some but of them have spent 10 years of their lives or more but on I some of the projects. You, you will note that the feasibility study for the schools okay, <laughs> was done a long time after the whole idea was conceptualized of what it was we wanted to do. Then it went to a feasibility study. That's why I want to. Whether it was good or not, between now and October. Story, but that's that's that was the we that was the do process. That. We should learn take the lessons learned <coughs> between now and October. Well, I'm not sure, sure the lesson would be to, to put the pass before the card. Yeah, I don't disagree. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. We have a uh, we're going to sign the town town meeting warrant. Uh, Mr. We'll Chairman, a motion to do that. Yeah, I move to sign the June 5, 2017 town meeting warrant. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion on it? Mr. Chairman, through you, I do yes. have the substitution for that page relative to the capital improvement Perfect. for the warrant. That'll go to the, that we better go to the constable. Make sure the uh, constable sees that exchange. Would you like to see this? No before no Just slip it yeah. in. Slip Article 27. <laughs> <laughs> the thumbprint on it. <clears throat> Zoom in on this make sure. Taking that page out. He's only kidding. He's only kidding. He knows he's being turned. Okay. Can we take the vote? And no more discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. We have. Uh, 830 FY 2018 budget informational hearing so I'm sorry about eight minutes late we'll get back on track thank you I'd like to read the informational hearing notice first the North Reading Board of Selectmen does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that an informational hearing on the fiscal year 2018 budget contained in the annual warrant will be held Monday, May 8, 2017, 8.30 p.m. Room 14 Town Hall. Interested, interested residents will be given the opportunity to be heard. Board of Selectmen. Mr. Town Administrator, you want to take over from here? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So we have a brief presentation that we put together for this evening. Um, really was not intending to repeat much of the work that's gone into the budget process over the, the past uh, three or four months. Um, so I'll just take it from uh, here. So the first slide here is just key adjustments to the uh, balance the FY28 town budget. And these are items that you see that were, were reviewed during the last meeting. They're items that we were able to uh, place into the budget uh, that go beyond the town administrator's recommendation, which was forwarded to the board. Um, in the middle of February. And again, I'll just re, uh, rehash them. It's a uh, time clock system for the DPW, spreader controls uh, for our uh, salt and sand uh, vehicles, um, building department staffing for an anticipated retirement next year, uh, professional services for the Economic Development Committee under the CPC's budget, uh, reserve fund transfer of $25,200 for public safety communications. I just want to note that this was something that we were initially discussing going into the fire department budget, but because of the fact that it looks like we're going to be proceeding with the uh, uh, wireless communication upgrade under the capital budget, we're recommending to put it into the finance committee's reserve so that's available to us for either this or another purpose if necessary. So it would actually go in the finance committee reserve. And then the uh, final item, and I see the number isn't identified there, but hopefully the assistant town accountant can fill in the gaps for me. When we went through and updated the debt service to reflect the, um, the water debt associated with capital projects approved in fiscal year 2017, there is an increase. And Lorianne, you have that number there? Yep, it's 352 
329. So 352,329. And, and if you were to go back and look in your budget books, you'll see that on paper in mid-February, the water enterprise budget was actually slated to decrease when compared to fiscal year 2017. So we've updated it to reflect the actual debt service numbers projected. Uh, and of course, the board will consider uh, rate setting after the June town meeting, probably in its first regular meeting in, uh, in June. So with that in mind, um, going through the fiscal year 2018 budget, the goals we identified were to continue our conservative revenue assumptions, and that was done in conjunction with the financial planning team, to maintain our reserves, to institute legacy benefit changes through labor contract negotiations, and we were able to settle uh, multiple contracts over the course of fiscal year 2017 and are implementing them in fiscal year for, for fiscal year 16, 17, 18, and in one case, fiscal year 19. Uh, to maintain an affordable health plan, which I'll talk more about in the next agenda item. Uh, continue to develop alternate revenue sources. Continue dedicated budget funding for the capital improvement planning program, which you saw Mr. Keller present earlier. Continue budget collaboration between the town and school leaders through the financial planning team. And we met several times during this budget process to finalize the numbers that are uh, available in here. So just to show you the breakdown of revenue and how it will be applied uh, for this upcoming year. Fixed costs at 32% of the budget are $20.8 million. School department operations, $29.633 million, or 45%. And uh, 23% 23 general government operations at $15,265,765. And just showing you, uh, when you, when you take out the fixed cost, the allocation between the town budget and the school budget is 66%, 34%, and that's through a longstanding um, expenditure projection that we've used with the financial planning team. For the fiscal year 2018 uh, revenue plan, uh, we've had this slide up a on a couple of occasions, so I'm not going to go too far into detail on it, but uh, you'll note here that uh, there are several areas for uh, increase uh, with regard to fiscal year uh, 2018's revenue assumptions, starting at the top with uh, revenue uh, our tax levy increase under Proposition 2.5 as well as new growth. Um, the dedicated debt exclusion, the uh, largest chunk of which is uh, dedicated towards the uh, middle and high school project. Um, modest increase in uh, state aid, and it's something that we are going to have to monitor over the coming months, as we've uh, probably all seen the media relative to the challenges in the state budget for this particular fiscal year, as well as some concern for fiscal year 2018. Um, and right now we're carrying the approved uh, house budget numbers. Um, and we believe that those numbers will follow through to approval, but will to, to final government, uh, go the final governor's approval, but we'll uh, continue to monitor that. Um, and then uh, just noting down here, uh, an increase in our other fi financing services, uh, excuse me, other financing sources of approximately $500,000. And that's largely uh, associated with the use of uh, free cash through the debt, debt capital stabilization fund to stabilize this year's budget. And again, these are just another presentation of the, of the total fixed cost general government and school department budgets. Uh, again, key revenue adjustments where we saw an ability to increase revenue, uh, motor vehicle excise in the amount of $50,000. And we've continued to try to be responsible in adjusting that because we do know that it ebbs and flows with the economy and um, again, uh, often uh, may not necessarily be as strong as the economy can be, but we have seen growth, uh, so we were able to increase that assumption. Departmental revenue uh, increased by $5,000. Uh, licenses and permits are by $10,000. The meals tax, we're projecting $5,000 for an increase. Again, that use of the capital improvement stabilization fund in the amount of $553,666 is a certainly significant amount to be able to stabilize operations. And a big chunk of that was due to the fact that we were able to keep our snow and ice um, sure. deficit to a, a fairly minimal number at uh, what ended up being about $60,000 to be carried over uh, and funded at this June town meeting. Um, the OPED Trust, $20,000, and Ambulance Reserve Account at $11,102. Those were all critical for allowing us to be able to preserve the level services that we're uh, affording uh, within this budget recommendation. Uh, key expenditure drivers um, for fiscal year 2018, and this just notes the increase over fiscal year 2017. Um, health insurance, which again I'll talk further about, uh, at $114,000. Uh, capital improvements at $29,000. Uh, regional school assessment at $75,000, which uh, was an increase, but certainly not as significant as we at one point were for forecasting it to be. So that was something that helped us to preserve services as well. 
Um, other post-employment benefits at 125,000. County retirement assessment went up $215,000, and the reserve for abatements and uh, retirement set asides went up uh, just over $120,000 combined. Just a note with regard to fiscal year 2018 health insurance, we had a renewal, renewal projection from the existing carrier that was a 10% rate increase. We evaluated the market in conjunction with our insurance advisory committee and member unions for potential change of carrier. Also considered a new partially self-funded model for health insurance. Combining the partially self-funded model, which is commonly known as the participating funding arrangement model with a change in our carrier, the health insurance cost increase was reduced to 2.5% uh, with the potential, excuse me, there's a misprint there, the potential for further savings uh, through performance of the plan. And I'll speak further about that at the next agenda item. Just a note with regard to our reserves, and this was in the uh, Capital Improvement Planning Re Committee's report, um, $1.6 million in free cash uh, coming out of the past October town meeting, stabilization fund at $2.2 million. Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund at just under $1.2 million. Water Infrastructure Stabilization over $500,000. Uh, solid Waste at $100,000. Water Retained Earnings just over $500,000. And a Cell Tower Fund at $591,336. Again, just showing the breakdown for what ended up being our final budget numbers recommended to the board for town meeting. And that's the end of the slideshow. <laughs> so, uh, Try to keep it quick because there's been a number of discussions and we've had these slides up on a number of occasions. One thing that I will note, I know there was a request by the board to try to see a further breakdown of the fixed costs because of uh, some uh, issues that came up with regard to the finance department. We weren't able to produce that for this particular budget hearing. I think the understand. board understands why. Um, and uh, with that, uh, this is a, basically a public hearing opportunity for the public to comment. The board members I know have had much conversation. Um, uh, I defer to you, Mr. Chairman, as how you want to proceed next. Anybody have any questions or anything? No, there is a motion in the packet recommendation. I'm going to close the hearing if there no input. Right. I'm going to close the hearing and then we'll read motion, the motion. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend the f uh, fiscal year 2018 operating budget in the following amounts as proposed by the town administrator. Fixed cost uh, $20,804,799. School $29,633,545. Municipal, $15,265,765 for a total of $65,704,109. I have a second. Second. And any discussion on the board members? Just as a lot of hard work put into this to balance this budget and get to where we are today. And uh, again, uh, working with the uh, school committee and finance committee, uh, a lot of... Uh, have it put in by the chairman, but most certainly uh, town administrator and the finance director and business manager from the school department. Uh, many, many, many hours uh, put in trying to uh, craft a budget that would uh, maintain some semblance of level services and uh, come within uh, our budget constraints. Uh, another miracle <laughs> has been performed. Uh, anyone else? How true. <laughs> No, but it was, it was certainly a team effort to pull this together, but, you know, a special, I want to definitely give a special recognition to uh, Liz Rourke. As uh, people know, her dad passed away since we met last amongst trying to wrap all this up. And uh, she never lost sight of her duties, but at the same time, focusing on her family. And I want to thank Mrs. Galvin for stepping in this evening and, uh, and filling in for her, and uh, it's much appreciated. So it's a great team effort all around. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. M Mr. Chairman, through you, if I may just thank the department heads for all of their work going back the past four or five months in submitting your budgets and for being here this evening. And I kept it short for you. <laughs> and uh, I, I do want to particularly recognize Liz for her work leading up to uh, the, the final numbers that we were putting together at the beginning of uh, the week before last. And uh, Lori and Galvin in particular, who uh, has been uh, working side by side with myself uh, and a number of folks, including the town clerk. and. Karen in my office. Um, I just want to say thank you very much. No, thank you all the department heads, really, for coming in this evening. I know it's an impact on your families, so but we much appreciate it. But I also want to leave you with this. You know, this board has really been working hard to try to find new revenues for the future. And 
I really want to thank Mrs. McKnight. You've been helping us a lot with that, uh, our CPC members. And we have to do that for your ability to continue to fund your ever-growing expenses in every one of your departments. We know that. And we know that's going to be a key focus. And uh, we're committed to that as a board. And we want to thank you for your patience and your continued hard work to try to be very efficient. Because I'll tell you what, you look at those numbers up there, you know, for 23% of the budget, we do a lot with only a 23% of that budget. And uh, especially thank you to all of you. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. I want to give them a minute. Board members want to take a two-minute bathroom break while we let them exit? Or do you want to continue? I could use a drink of water. I figured. Well, you're going to take a two-minute recess. Like five minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Barbara, I'm bad. 43 years of...
All right. We're going to reconvene the meeting. That's crazy. All right. We are going to approve the FY 2018 health insurance changes. Excuse me, Michael. Yes. Are we going to go back and discuss and vote recommendations on articles that we skipped over? Out of Did I miss one? I think we're on number eight. Oh, we're on number eight. My bad. I, you know what? I crossed over it. Yes, let's do that first. Thank you. June town meeting, discuss and vote recommendations. We have quite a few left. I, I was actually surprised when I went through it the other night. We do, and uh, for those who are following along through the Dropbox folder, there is a, uh, a document in there that identifies it as updated motions. And what we've basically done is gone back through the warrant and tried to reconcile the article numbers with the motions that are required. And the reason for that is because when we got the draft back from town council, they advised that we needed to consolidate all of the revolving fund articles into a single article. And it changed the numbering of a number of articles. Okay. So that's the revised motion. The revised PDF. motions, if you're following on, those are the ones that require action still at this point in time. Okay. I have a presentation that goes through all the warrant articles. Uh, I'm going to pass over the ones that we've already taken a vote on in the okay. interest of time. Um, with the exception of Article 3, which has changed because of the $75,000 relative to the feasibility study. But uh, I will come to that. Right. So um, the board had asked that I put together a slide that show things that are on the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, this is a draft of it, just based on the comments that I heard and you know, things that might be in the queue coming up. Um, I try to take everything that I heard come up in the last discussion and everything I was aware of. I don't know that we need to finalize it tonight. We can certainly do so at another point, but this is a starting point for the discussion because it was a, a, a work item that came out of the last foreign article discussion. Am I close? Yes. I think you're good. Okay. And moving through the standard uh, delineation of the available funds for uh, the upcoming town meeting. I'm just going through each article. The first is the budget amendment. Um, again, I mentioned that there may be a need for a transfer relative to um, the uh, town council budget. There may be other areas that are identified between now and the June town meeting and we'll keep the board apprised. Our goal would be to have that information finalized for the May 22nd meeting when the board will next review the warrant and have the informational hearing, but I don't know that we'll have it finalized at that point in time. So I would not recommend, or, or the board can either not take any action or can recommend a town meeting that article. Um, you may want to wait till May 22nd to make that determination. That's what I would do. We're good to that. Uh, board members, you okay actually, waiting until the 22nd? I, I, I take that back. Because we're going to be printing this version of it, the board may wish to say recommend a town meeting because it's going to be mailed to people's homes with a recommendation right. in it. So I apologize for that. Take a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 1 of the fiscal year 2017 Budget amendment. Do I have a second? Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Article 2. So Article 2, I believe the board's already taken uh, action on relative to the snow and ice deficit. Article 3, we're just noting this article uh, because it has changed. You know, based on the fact that we're not doing the feasibility study for the Town Hall and Fire Station that created an additional $75,000 that we were <coughs> basically asked to reserve for the October Town Meeting. And the way we're proposing to do this in conjunction with the Assistant Finance Director's advice would be to put it in the Capital Improvement Stabilization mm -hmm. Fund, which would be handled through this particular article. So again, for the record, the balance of the, the fund is $1.185 million. We propose to add $932,637 from free cash and $200,000 from the FY 2017 debt service um, budget, uh, part of which will fund the operating budget. Um, and that includes, or if I got this correct, it includes $75,000 for the feasibility study. Yes, it's a debt service budget, not the debt service Yeah, that's correct. It says debt right? service stabilization, but it's actually the debt service budget. Right. Okay. And these are essentially adjustments to the 2017 budget, correct? Correct, um, which will be used to apply towards the FY 2018, 2018 budget. Right. Okay, so so we're going to fix Article Three in the warrant, so it reads the same way. So Article Three is a standard article relative to transfer into the stabilization fund. So the language itself okay. won't change, but the dollar amount that we'll be putting in the motion has changed. Okay. That does not get printed in the warrant. Thank you. <clears throat> this would be a recommend. 
We already voted. Think, right? Did we already yeah. vote? We already I voted. Would ask you, I don't know if the board wishes to re-vote yeah. it based on the new dollar amount. Oh. And that's why we brought so it up. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 3, Fiscal Year 2017, Appropriate Funds to Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Second. For discussion, anyone? No? Mr. Minupelli? You good? Good. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 4, Transferring Funds to the Water Stabilization Fund. The balance today is $542,412. We normally do a forecast closer to town meeting, and recommendation would be to vote for a recommendation at town meeting. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. I move to recommend at town meeting Article 4, Fiscal Year 2017, transfer funds to Water Stabilization Fund. Second. By you. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 5. Mr. Chairman, Article 5. This would be to transfer fund to the stabilization fund, the general stabilization fund, with the balance, with the balance of $2.255 million. We made a transfer in, a substantial transfer, in the October 2016 town meeting, and we do not have a plan to transfer in funds for this particular town meeting. And therefore, uh, the board can either choose to recommend or can recommend a town meeting, but we do not intend to recommend any transfer. And our financing plan for fiscal year 18, June town meeting, does not include a transfer in. So would this be more appropriate to pass over this article? I think we already did, didn't we, our last meeting? Didn't we already do that? We, we had it noted as one that was not voted on. Uh, you know, again, it may have been that it was, but in the instance of identifying one way or the other, I'd ask the board to take a action, even if it's to pass over. Let's just make a recommendation at town meeting. Who knows, we may if I get a windfall. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. That'll work? <laughs> Don't want to shut the door. Mr. Chairman, I move to make a recommendation <coughs> at town meeting, Article 5, Fiscal Year 2017, Appropriate Money to the Stabilization Fund. Do I have a second? Second. Any more discussion? I did buy a lottery ticket tonight, and if I do win, I'll share some for this. On the record. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. It's a two dollar ticket. So. Did we vote, Michael? I said all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, um, fiscal year 2017, transfer of funds to the other post employment benefit liability trust fund. Current balance is $578,224. Um, we're projecting $250,000 that would be available from the FY17 pension and benefit budget to be transferred into the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Um, the recommendation will be to recommend. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 6, Fiscal Year 2017, uh, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. Correct. Second by Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 7, um, that we, I, we generally identify the amount to be transferred closer to the town meeting, and the recommendation would be to recommend a town meeting, Article 7. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend uh, Article 7, Fiscal Year 2017, transfer funds to Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. We Do I have make a recommendation to town meeting. Recommendation to town meeting. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's clarify. Recommendation at town meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Moving along, the next article for which our records indicate uh, recommendations need is Article 13. Again, uh, we have one known bill at this time um, from uh, the Public Works Department. We may identify others, so at this point we would ask for a recommendation at town meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 13, prior year's bills. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, Article 14, which is a consolidation of what was three separate articles relative to the MWRA project. Um, these are all to be funded through the water enterprise, potentially defrayed by any available state or federal assistance. And uh, my recommendation is the board recommend. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 14, Flood Construction and Pump Station, uh, Reading and North Reading Water System Improvements, and for NWRA Water Interconnection. Second. I got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Does it, the motion doesn't match that, does it? No. Could you just I was looking at the same thing. It says Reading, Reading Water System Improvement 4.6, but I believe... It says Reading and North Reading. What's there should be three components, a pump station, construction, North Reading Water System Improvements, and then Reading Water System Improvements yeah. to be paid for. So in the Warren article, it says Reading Water System Improvements, construction, 4.6 million North Reading System Improvements. I was just listening to the, the, Andy, what was it? What was the motion that you oh, I'll read that back again. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 14, Fund Construction of Pump Station, Reading and North Reading Water System Improvements for NWRA Water Interconnection. Period. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess that covers it. And I second it. Okay. That covers it. Good. I have a motion. I have a second, I believe. So any more discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. We go to 16 now, Michael? I believe no. Actually, we I've already did 16, right? So I don't believe that we've filed a recommendation with regard to either the operating budget or the capital budgets, and I'm oh, not 15. sure why they're there, but I we would believe the board would want to recommend them based on its prior votes. <laughs> so I would ask so you recommend uh, voting to recommend both Articles 15 and Article 16. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend both Articles 15. Yeah, we'll deal with 15 first. Yeah, Article 15, 15 of, the time. of the town warrant. Second. Any more discussion? Mr. Chairman, to clarify, so th there's an issue with the renumbering due to the consolidation of the articles that caused them to be missed. I am going to abstain from voting on this article. Uh, my daughter is working for the Recreation Department this summer, so there's money in there for her to work um, in the summer job. So I am going to abstain from voting on this article. Any m more discussion? Hey. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And one abstention. Similarly, for Article 16, this would be for the fiscal year 18 town capital budget uh, as uh, approved earlier in the meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 16, Fiscal Year 2018, Capital Expenditures. Second. And I got a second. I got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 17. I'm sure everyone is eager to recommend this article. <laughs> My recommendation <laughs> would be to recommend a town meeting. You got a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 17, appropriate funds for facilities at Arthur J. Kenny Field. You have a second? Second. Any more discussion? Thank God. Enough said. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 18, rescind authorization to borrow. Uh, I don't have detail immediately available on this uh, article, so we're recommending to recommend a town meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 18 to rescind authorization to borrow. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Minupelli. Any more discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 21, the transfer uh, funds to the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Balance today is $578,224. This would be appropriation of $300,000 from raise and appropriate in accordance with the 2018 financial plan. Um, and it represents 100% of the required deposit for new hire employees in fiscal year 2018. My recommendation would be to recommend. Uh, before we make a motion, just on the drop box I have, Article 21 is lined out. Mm -hmm. There's a newer one in there. New, okay. Yeah, if you go to today's, yeah, are you in today's? Okay. No, I mean on the actual. No, he's talking the actual warrant. He's like, he must be looking at it. It's on today's Dropbox. Really? Yeah. I, I think because they. So they they changed. Shouldn't have been changed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so j just 
for the edification of the members, there's a separate PDF that was put in the Dropbox folder when town council's comments came back, including the consolidation of the revolving funds. So you should be looking at a warrant entitled Final ATM Warrant. Yeah. Okay. Separate, yeah. Separate document. So arrow, arrow over, go back to the menu, and there it is. You should see it right down, the second one down, I believe, the third That's one the ATM. Features. Okay. See ATM? It wasn't in there this afternoon. It'll it's in there. Yeah, I yeah, it looks like oh, it's okay. in there around 4 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Go back and then go back in. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah, sometimes you have to go back in to get it updated. All right. Um, rookie move. <coughs> We're 21, right? We're at 20. Mr. Correct. Chairman, I move to. Oh, was that? Yes. To re recommend. Recommend uh, Article 21 transfer funds to other post employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. 22. Article 22, relative to appropriating money for special counsel legal expenses. Um, re recommendation from the special counsel is to request $50,000 from, and the recommended funding source is the overlay reserve. Um, so uh, my recommendation would be to uh, recommend. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 22, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Do I have a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 23? Or 4? It should be Article 24. 24. Again, uh, for the record, this is a consolidated article. Uh, an amendment to the, to the law requires that the town uh, have a general bylaw and uh, allows the town to authorize the funds in a single article. So that was the draft that that was a change that was made in the draft that was signed by the nice. board. My recommendation to the board would be to recommend. You have a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman. I move to recommend Article 24, revolving funds. Second. And you have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 25. This is an article relative to the regulation of drones, and I want to thank the police chief for joining us here this evening and for his efforts with town council to generate this article. We have a brief summary that I think has been provided to most of the board members, although the new member may not have seen it, uh, but I'll just go through it uh, quickly. Um, this was a sum these bullets are directly from a summary prepared by town council. So the federal government, through the Federal Aviation Administration, regulates the use and operation of unmanned aircraft systems, commonly known as drones and they maintain exclusive jurisdiction over regulating the airways under federal law. Uh, the use of unmanned aircraft systems is, is subject to significant federal regulation by the F FAA, including licensure and operational requirements. There's no, uh, not currently any Massachusetts state law that directly addresses the issue of drones, excuse me. <laughs> under municipalities, police power, communities may, under limited circumstances, regulate the use of drones including addressing privacy and public safety concerns. And I just want to stop for a moment. I think that's a crux of the concern that the, that the, the chief had uh, relative to this matter, that this is an evolving area where, they, uh, where there is a belief that we may be receiving complaints as it becomes more pervasive. And this would allow us to try to maintain the quality of life by addressing those complaints through local regulation. The town's proposed drone bylaw seeks to utilize the town's police powers to protect its citizens from invasions of privacy potential trespassers and address safety issues presented by a careless drone operations which are not otherwise the subject of federal law. Federal and state laws applicable to drones as well as case law interpreting the permissible regulations and use of drones throughout the nation does continue to evolve and the use of such systems continues to increase. So um, with regard to that, uh, the chief is here I think to answer any questions that we, uh, we may have but uh, to summarize it for the board members and for the public. Um, this is intended to provide a, a vehicle to address any quality of life complaints that may come up. I'm going to ask the chief to go to the podium. <coughs> Thank you, chief. Anybody have any questions? I, do, I have one. So, the public, what's your, I guess your, recommendation to the public on if there's one of these flying in their neighborhood or in their yard or over their houses what's the proper procedure of a resident what do they do if they feel that one of these is infringing on their privacy what's the right don't, right now, don't shoot it down no I wouldn't recommend no. But right now there's nothing you can do 
So yeah. essentially the FAA regulates airspace. They don't regulate your privacy. Um, so um, essentially, I have, this is, this is the book of regulations. Not one mentions somebody's home and what a drone could be used for. Um, this came to our attention when they filmed the movie back here in, a couple of years ago. Um, we did have a drone that was up in the air um, filming the movie production. So uh, we, had, we had no teeth. We couldn't do anything about it. Um, so essentially, we, I spoke to the town administrator and town council a couple of years ago. Um, really, the, because the regulations continue to change, continue to evolve, the technology is, is getting better and better. Um, you know, we really didn't do much with it. Um, and Mr. Yule brought it to my attention this year, and it was something that we were going to address um, at either June or October town meeting. The bottom line on this is, is essentially we don't want anybody filming somebody floating in their pool. And there's nothing we can do at this point to stop that from happening. As long as it's within line of sight, no higher than 300 feet, um, and they properly register it if it's over 0.55 pounds, there's nothing we can do as a police department. So essentially, we look at that as, as an extension of somebody's eye, and they, you know, they can film it, put it up on YouTube, and all sorts of other bad things. Um, essentially, we're we're looking, you know, it's a fine, um, but it's a start for us. Uh, and we're hoping that the state steps in at some point and 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 establishes some regulations so that there's some teeth to it. Um, you know, the drones. You know, there's a lot of good uses to it. There's a lot of commercial uses to it. Um, we just don't want it abused and taking advantage of somebody's pri uh, privacy um, because there will be a lack of privacy once it gets exposed. So when we prove this at town meeting, that gives you a at least some leverage to have some level of control. Yes. But it's minor at best. Yeah, I mean, the $300 fine is, is what we're proposing. But you know, you know, most people will abide by a, a bylaw, or but right now we just don't have anything in place. So you know, we're, when we certainly can't, um, we can report them, but there's not much we can do as far as the FAA regulations go. Mr. Schultz, uh, and Mr. Chief. Zaber. By the way, great detective work by you and your guys in the last week or so. I want to take that on the record. Uh, with respect to drones, I just want to clarify. I did get a call from a commercial user of a drone, and I've read this proposed legislation, and it reads fine to me. Uh, just want to clarify, though, that anyone that's uh, licensed by the FAA to use drones commercially can still use them for any lawful purpose, correct? Yeah, and even somebody that's for recreational purposes, as long as it's for lawful purposes, we're just looking to avoid somebody using it to look into somebody's home or into their yard. Um, you know, right now, somebody could be outside your window recording right inside your bedroom with the drone. There's nothing we can do about it. Right. So that's what we're trying to avoid, not... The, you know the real estate company that's yeah. taking photographs of the home or um, you know anybody else is doing for for a legitimate reason that's certainly not a legitimate reason going into somebody's home Absolutely. Yes, sir. Michael, I was out on this my side yard with my grandson flying as a drone straight up right and you can see several of the Navy's yards at that altitude mm -hmm can still be on your property. Yes. So, so it seems to me it makes it, not that I'm against what you're proposing, but right. it seems to me it makes it extremely difficult for you to sort out what a violation is and what it, it isn't. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no doubt. It's not going to be easy, but we have nothing else at this point. But I look at this as very similar to if somebody was standing in your backyard, was standing in the streets, and he's able to see three or four different homes but if they're invading your privacy, we can act on that. Whether through peeping Tom, no trespassing, we can do something because there's a criminal statute in place that the police can do something. Disorderly, there's a lot that we can do. Um, with the drones, because of the way the regulations are, as long as it's within line of sight, which line of sight can be, I mean, some people have good eyes, and they can see pretty far distances, and as long as it's not 300 feet, you could be sitting on your deck watching it through a laptop and watching somebody in their backyard. That's what we're trying to avoid. Is it going to be easy to prove? Probably not. But we don't have anything else at this point to, um, to stop any of the activity. 
but most people are, who are abiding are not going to invade somebody's privacy. It's that, you know, that one chance that it does happen. We want to be able to at least take action. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you. Make a motion. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 25, amend the Code of General Bylaws, regulation of drones. Do I have a second? Second, second by Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? No. No more discussion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Opposed? One. One no. Okay. Ridiculous. 26. Ridiculous. Article 26 relative to snow removal on streets and sidewalks. So this would be an update to the existing bylaw. Uh, it would strengthen the existing bylaw to promote greater compliance. Uh, update the standard for acceptable practices to address snow and ice uh, removal. Raises the fine to $300 per day and allows for the issuance of a fine on the first offense rather than the existing issuance of a warning, then a $50 fine, then a $100 fine. Uh, and a town under the bylaw would be able to recover the cost of snow and ice removal uh, and the fine as well. Um, this is a result of uh, uh, discussions between myself, the police chief, and the director of public works with regard to uh, the issue of sidewalk snow removal. Uh, again, as, as the board well knows, is a, uh, a responsibility that is not put upon our residential property owners, but is put upon our non-residential property owners. Uh, and uh, for purposes of trying to effectively enforce and gain compliance, these are recommended changes to the bylaw. Anyone want to jump in on this one? Yeah, I go like right in. Um, as many of you know, I'm past president of the Chamber of Commerce. This issue has come up with businesses for years in North Reading. The problem I think I have is not so much, I think if we're going to have a statute, we have to give the chief the, the tools to enforce it. The problem I have is with the actual statute is on 28 especially, we have chunks of, si chunks of area that have sidewalks, that don't have sidewalks, that have sidewalks. Parts of it is residential, parts of it's commercial, so it's not contiguous commercial. It's not contiguous sidewalk. And you have, I remember a couple of years, what was it that winter we had all that snow, maybe three winters 50, ago? or 2015. Yeah. There was a mountain of snow there, and I had a, a shop owner call me on behalf of the chamber saying, I've just got a ticket or a warning for this, and there's like literally four feet of snow. I mean, it's not like in front of your house where they're just plowing one side of the street. You're getting two lanes of 28 thrown on their sidewalk. This particular guy just had a stent put in his heart and got a ticket for not shoveling a sidewalk. I, I, I personally just have a problem with the statute, the way it's written. I mean, I understand if we're going to have a statute, we need to have the chief be able to enforce it. But I just think the statute is poorly written in the sense that we don't have a contiguous sidewalk. And even if this statute was absolutely followed by everybody, you would still have chunks where residents didn't do it, but commercial did. And then chunks where there was no sidewalk anyway. So it doesn't really, the benefit of having a shoveled sidewalk all the way from north to south of Main Street, it just isn't going to work the way our sidewalks are set up. That's just where I come at it, but I, I may be different than the rest of the board here on this one. Anyone else? What's the appeal uh, process for, say, someone, for example, who has a, an issue that can't shovel and gets ticketed for not? Do you, do, you, do you know what that is? So the appeal process would effectively go to uh, a court, if I understand it correctly. I don't know if it would be a superior court they would have appealed to. District court. District court. So I mean that that is a vehicle for uh, for appeal. Um, you know, currently right now we issue a warning, obviously, uh, with regard to it, and then it requires a second visit. And but, but that would be the vehicle for appeal. So, come on, well, because it costs almost three hundred dollars to file and serve a complaint in Superior Court anyway. So, so effectively, there really, even though there is a appeal, there really isn't an appeal for someone who would have an immediate need to be heard on something like that. I mean, that's a prime example. Of yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that the, the bylaw, the amendments to the bylaw, through you, Mr. Chairman, the amendments to the bylaw are intended to uh, achieve the, the goal, what we believe the goal of the bylaw is, which is to get the snow removed. Um, I, I don't know the history as to why the bylaw developed in the way that it did and why it was targeted in the way that it did, but if the townspeople and or the board are expecting us to enforce it the way it's written, we found that it's a challenge to do, and these steps would allow it to be um, addressed. I think there's a difference between enforcement, which I agree. If we're going to have this bylaw, we have to 
change the way we enforce it. Mm -hmm. My whole point is I think the bylaw is faulty. Just the way our sidewalks are set up, it just doesn't work. Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, and the word is the goal. If the, our ultimate goal is the sidewalks. They have them clear after the snowstorm. I believe it's 24 hours after a snowstorm. Then I still believe our time is better spent working with the business community to figure out how we pay our DPW department to go up and down those sidewalks after each storm and plow those sidewalks. Because, like Mr. Schultz has pointed out, we have residential properties that are not going to shovel. And that means we're going to have our businesses shovel. Folks will be walking down those sidewalks and they'll be forced to walk out in the Route 28 to go around those residents that didn't shovel and then get back onto a shoveled sidewalk or to an area that doesn't have any sidewalks. It doesn't make sense to me, and I think we're creating more problems. And then to have a police officer that we're paying a fairly good labor rate to be out there to be dealing with this issue, I, I take great offense to it. Um, and I think we should focus back on the goal and figure out how we plow those sidewalks and we reimburse, and the, and the town gets reimbursed for the TPW to do it. I think that's a much better discussion than keep every year we bring this same bylaw up and we tweak it and we tweak it, and we've accomplished nothing as far as I'm concerned. I think there's been an awful lot of compliance. I think there's been more compliance than non-compliance. And I think the issues are with the same individuals I really We're not in compliance. Really? I have not heard that. That's the first time I've heard we have compliance. I think we've made significant progress. Now some, some commercial yeah. owners do it. I, I, some, I, I, through, I just think, like you said, Mr. Prisco, you have sections that aren't even, don't even have a sidewalk, never mind our residential. Yeah. we so, got to look at the statute, not the enforcement piece. Chief. If I may, so as far as compliance goes, we have not had a lot of compliance over the last three years. Um, and, and I think the bigger issue becomes the people who are compliant plow their spot, mm -hmm. and then essentially we have about three or four feet of snow between the lot lines that are never plowed. So it seems like every, unless they're friendly neighbors, they'll, they'll help each other out. It seems like every lot has at least three or four feet of snow in between. Um, but we've seen, uh, we haven't seen a lot of compliance, and it's been going on for at least five years since I've been chief. Um, and even after storms, we went out and verbal warned everybody, the next storm we have the same offenders again. So that's why we at least wanted some teeth into, because we weren't getting any compliance, or else we wouldn't have come forward. Well, what's the board want to do? So I don't know, we were getting your information in regards to the compliance, but maybe you're hearing from different people. Than the chief. Uh, again, and my mine is based on observation, and uh, I think there's been a few who were scoff laws before who are complying a little better. Now maybe the in between the, the two lots, it's not happening. Uh, and again, maybe the the uh, contiguousness of, of who's complying, you know, is uh, still raising issues. But I still think there are a lot, a lot of commercial uh, property owners who are now in greater compliance than they were before. That being said, I think the police department, I mean, we have a bylaw on the books, and it, uh, and it should be complied with. And in order to make that work, they need more teeth. And, you know, whether you have to spend $300 to get it appealed or spend 200 bucks to have it removed, yeah, it's a fiscal decision on certain people's part to, to comply. So to me, uh, if we have a bylaw on the books, it should be enforced. And, get the department the tools to make it more enforceable and get more people to comply. And I don't disagree, you know, at some point, again, if the DPW is going to go in there and clean it up, then it just needs to be a back charge. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where that, again, be will, um, either we'll be in the business of cleaning up other people's property, mm -hmm. and they're going to pay us for it, which is okay, but my guess is that that cost is going to be significant, significantly more than if they hired a contractor to do it. It should be anyway. A lot of the businesses have a contractor that comes in to plow their parking spaces. I mean, I don't know whether it's other kinds of businesses that don't have parking lots or very small ones that are the ones that are the violators or not, because I don't pay a lot of attention to them. But 
the machine, the vehicles you need to plow a parking lot in a sidewalk I, are know, completely I, different. I do agree with the Indy on one part is that you know there is no consistent sidewalk in certain areas, or it's on the other side of the street, and uh, you know that goes for a lot of our side streets too. When you think about where the sidewalks are, uh, you know I, I think it's part of maybe the whole industrialization and development of Route 28 that needs to be added to it. In the interim, there is a bylaw, and unless you want to change the bylaw or delete it, I think you need to have enough, the police department has had enough leverage to uh, enforce the bylaw, period. I'd like to make a recommendation for consideration. You know, we're not going to have any snow between now and October. Can we hopefully pass over <laughs> that? Can we pass over this article and then take the effort to maybe hold a workshop with our business community, uh, especially the folks on Route 28? We'll get a message out to them. We can hold it up at the distance learning lab, bring them in, and have this discussion with all of them. To see, I just think our time would be better spent to get them in the room, give them one fair shot to get their feedback provide our concern and understand that you know we're going to go to a town meeting we're going to make a change that's going to be pretty significant or to come up with a better solution because i still think the only solution that helps us achieve this goal is that they got to fund our bbw to go out there and fund and plow those sidewalks i i just i don't even think this is going to achieve your goal i think this is going to pe have people upset i think you're going to be uh, you're going you're going to have people fighting this all the time um, and you're going to have your staff on a busy, snowy day, even the following days with accidents, they're going to be out doing this, and they're going to be distracted from the real work. And Mrs. Mullen, if you'd like, if you wouldn't mind going to the podium, I'm sorry. I know you're sitting in these new comfy chairs, and they're really hard to get out of now because they're so comfortable, but I'd appreciate that it. It's pretty comfortable. Thank Aren't you. Aren't they nice? Peter Mullen, 29 Abbott Road. I think if our uh, interest is and concern is safety, I would much rather see our DPW and us put a, a number on the DPW and ask them to do the sidewalks because the point that you brought up, if especially on 28, and especially with what you said, the areas in between, you do have to walk in the street to get around it. So why would we chance somebody possibly getting hit right. when the DPW could plow them for everybody? I think it's an awful lot to put also on businesses when you talk about that year we had three years ago, 24 hours. 24 hours later, we had another storm coming in every time, and to really believe that the businesses, and especially a lot of the small businesses in 28, are gonna put somebody out there to uh, shovel the driveway, or shovel the sidewalk, especially where they don't even have people coming in because they can't get to work, is not enough time to do it. I'd prefer that we have the DPW plow the driveways because they do an excellent job and not leave it up to the businesses. If there's some fee that you're gonna put on them afterwards, but I think to pretend to go after them uh, in what you said is for a policeman to go to court, spend the money that you do to go to court. You can't do it on drug cases that they walk out before here. Now you're gonna do it on people on the uh, sidewalks. So I prefer, I think that we look at, a, maybe if you're gonna, I like the idea, take three or four months, look at it, talk to the DPW, see what it adds to a budget. And if there's a fee that you want to talk to the business communities about, but I think that's a better way of achieving your goal. Thank you. Is there a, yeah, and I just think I never want to speak for the chief, but I think you would agree your guys' times are spent better off doing other things besides ticketing people for sidewalks. Yeah, so um, I typically will get a call from the town administrator asking us to go out. Um, we don't dedicate any extra resources to it. It's typically the on-duty officer. The problem that we have is Walmart, for example. The manager that's in that store, even though by the bylaw he's responsible for it, has nothing to do with the plow contract. Um, you know, it's it's a um, management company that manages it. We have to go now contact them. It's not just a, a quick notification. It takes, believe it or not, it sounds crazy. It takes one officer almost. 10 hours to go and notify everybody on Main Street. And we have to do it every storm. This is not where we do it at the beginning of the winter and we've basically done it for the rest of the year. It, it is, we have to do it every storm. It seems like they just disregard the sidewalks. 
there are those that are compliant and it's just part of the regular plow routine right now. Um, we can't figure out why. We, they do it eventually when we ask them to do it. Uh, but then we have the issue of, like I said, where now we have who's going to debate whose property this is now because we, we, we know who owns the sidewalk up to a certain point, but we have a map. We're not going to be out there. We're not engineers. So it's not easy to, to do. Um, but in the middle of everything else, I don't think it's a, a great idea to have us going door to door telling people that they should be doing what their responsibilities are. Uh, like I said, as it exists now, if we were to do anything, we need to have um, stronger action um, to, to have them hold themselves accountable. But I don't think we're going to accomplish the goal that we want, which is to clear the sidewalks, even with that $300 fine. So this would just allow you to just fine, forget the one, and just give the fine to whoever is there in the business or whoever's, whether they're... We could fine either the occupant or the owner of the property. That's nope. a good point. I know, like, with Joe Fish, they just rent from the company that owns the whole complex. And yes. It, so, I mean, who do you find in that situation? That's, that's a very good point. It's an either or by yeah. the bylaw. Well, this says that you can have the town go out there, the chief could have the town go out there and plow the snow, and then we get re reimbursed for it. That's the way I read that. Yes. So. That's not really going to achieve enforcement, though. That's just going to let someone say, let them do it, I'll pay it later. But, so... When you do do this now, do you take a picture? How do you prove it? So if someone does appeal it, it's, yeah, you know, proven. We've had two appeals. The courts don't want to hear the cases. They just throw them out. Right. Yeah. Because a drone is a good way to capture that, just so yeah. you know. <laughs> and you guys are going to be super busy with this bylaw now, chasing down airplanes and helicopters and drones now and trying to prove those were invading people's privacy. But um, I think it's good up to the degree that you're able to just find whoever's there. But I, I don't know if that's going to effectuate enforcement if it's just a recalcitrant business owner that isn't going to comply no matter what. It's going to wait till it melts anyway. Um, and it's a fruitless endeavor if, yeah, if we're it's going to appeal. You know. Well. That's my proposals on the table, but if you want to move on to the motion, Mr. Mr. O'Leary. We had um, a preview and call previously uh, when this was first brought up. And the whole thing. We uh, met with some business leaders. We met with the chamber. Uh, we were asked to postpone it for a year to get the word out. Uh, we had to buy in from the chamber and chamber members and property owners and uh, promises of compliance. So what are you looking to achieve here? More of the same. And again, until you start hitting them in the pocketbook, my guess is you're going to get a little more attention. And so um, I wouldn't suggest, you know, scrapping the bylaw. So I say let's put some teeth into it, get some more compliance in it, and then, if, then you're going to generate more uh, meaningful discussion as to what a, a proper solution would be, or a more comprehensive solution. But would you object to waiting until October town meeting on this? To try to, you know, you know, we have a new board member that has a strong relationship with I the think business you tell them, You've got two choices here. You either, you shall vote, you're subject to these fines, or the EPW is going to do it. Here's your bill. We've got to figure out how much that would be and let them make the choice. I mean, it doesn't matter to us. We just want to make sure the sidewalks. The, the problem we have, though, if the DPW doesn't do it, like Ms. Mullins just said, you still have, like, in front of Green Briar, you still have in front of residential areas that won't be done. So you're not going to have the, the whole object of the statute is to have a Cloud sidewalk from Point Andover to Reading. We're not going to have that the way the statute's written. Is, is the problem? How do I think that should be the goal? And how do we get there? But I, I hear what you're saying. If we're going to have the statute, you have to have teeth to it. Right. And again, yeah. we've had previous discussions with the chamber through the chamber, one yeah, right. through no, the chamber, right. you know, yeah. uh, and promises for compliance. But that doesn't affect the. How do we deal with the residential areas? That's the problem. The problem is just it's not. Are people compliant with the current statute? If, no. if the problem is the residential areas, again, the town already plows residential areas. The town already plows portions of Route 28, which the town is responsible for. So the if sidewalks on? Yes. Because I know there's chunks of sidewalks that aren't being done. The chunks of sidewalks areas. that are under the town control are done by the DPW right. over the town. Yeah, because that was an issue amongst the board members. Right. You know, if we're going to be expecting, you know, commercial owners to be in yeah. compliance, we better well be in compliance. Yeah. Now the question comes, you know, should we require the DPW to do in front of the residential properties, 
you treat them just as regular residential yeah. property owners, and then you get your, the rest of them are commercial. Mr. Uh, Larry, I'm going to come back to you. Mrs. minupelli has been waiting. No, we'll I just wanted to say maybe the better approach, and I, I, th I think I agree with Mr. O'Leary, because I do recall this being discussed over and over and over again. It, the better approach with the business owners is to maybe just give them a list of contractors they can call if it's an issue with them, but not we don't have to keep meeting with them. I think if it's $300, fine, the next day it's another $300 until it melts, or I don't agree that we're just going to do it for them and bill them, um, because... I, I think our people are already out there 24 hours and doing these long chunks of work. And again, it would be a lot of uh, a lot of enforcement issue, I think, to have to keep doing that. But maybe the better way is to give them, you know, if you can't find someone, here's a list, you know, go to these to get it done. Make sure you get it done within 24 <coughs> hours. Well, Something I think like the, that. The, there's, a, there's another basic issue, right? And uh, there's lots of trucks with plows to deal with the streets and the parking lots, the DPW has limited equipment to do the sidewalks. They have a plow and a snowblower. And the priority, obviously, is to get the sidewalks for the walkers to school first. Schools and parks. Right? And get the streets all cleaned and everything. And then they shift their energy to these other areas. In the meantime, it snows two days later. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, ahead. things get way behind. Yeah. So there's no... You know, if you have a good winter, it's easy. And if you have a bad winter, you know, they, they could go for days before those things get taken care of. And that's probably true even using the, uh, the various uh, store owners, uh, the property owners, getting the same thing done, right? Unless, you know, they buy their own snowblower and try to do the walk. And uh, along Route 28, after the plows get through pushing it on the sidewalk, uh, it becomes even more difficult. So there's, there's no simple solution to this no. at all. I don't know. I'm just one of five, but I would propose we pass that over for now and put it on the agenda for another meeting. Have the business community come in and let's hear from them. And then, you know, we can determine what we want to do. I just don't think we're going to, the whole object is safety of having a clean sidewalk all the way up and down 28. We're not going to have that. No, they, you know, the way it's statute's written. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, so let's, let's make a, let's re, let's make a decision on the motion. Unless this is more discussion on the board want to I'd like to try to move on to this. Well, I mean, if we're looking to push it off till October, is it but to push it off till October to inform the commercial property owners that we intend to? Oh, yeah. You know, to I think we'd let them come in here and tell them we're going to be talking about this on this meeting. If you want to be heard, come in. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would be. Yeah. I don't think we necessarily have to do we've that. Been through that yeah. part. I think but we cool. could, you know, you to be, uh, I we could make you the liaison and. Yeah. Get this information out through the chamber. They got to get it out between now and October. If they have a better idea, you know, more than we said, but that means you have to meet before you know the end of August. You're right. You know, yeah. the we'll get it on the agenda. Closes, but if you're going to amend things, I think we should have one night where we have we have they have the opportunity to come in here. Do you guys agree with that? Or I don't disagree. Well, with it yeah. depends on what our intentions are. Right. Is, is it to, to, to have them come in here, beat us up, and say this is a bad idea and we shouldn't be fine and we should get a treat like everybody else? Or is it our intention to inform them that this is our intention, what we're going to be putting in force and proposing a town meeting, you know, for an enforcement thing, and be prepared to pay the bill? You know, I, I don't know. But it, it, but I know what my position is, but yeah. I'm not sure right now where everyone else is at. I just want to say, this is menu. I think we all do, but I, I, don't, I wouldn't. Why, why postpone it? You know what I mean? I think people people that live here want the sidewalks clean. Why postpone it to October? Only because this statute, even with the enforcement, is not going to clean the sidewalks. The only thing that's different is instead of a warning at first, it can into whoever the owner is now, it's the fine, next day fine, next day fine, to whoever's a tenant or an owner. No, what I'm saying is we still have the stretch of residential that it's not, you're not going to have a contiguous plowed sidewalk. You're not going to achieve the goal. Yeah, yeah it's not going to achieve the goal of having I so. Think, uh, I, I think, I th think about it, I think we, that we should pass this and that we should act on it, act favorably on it and encourage town meeting to act favorably on it. And if the business community is that concerned, again, they, they should be informed that we've just enacted this. And before the October town meeting, if they want to propose something else to us to help solve the problem, um, they'll have an opportunity that, that the board may even sponsor an article if they come up with the right ideas, or they can put together a citizen's petition. That's fine with me. 
You know, so I'm saying, you know, let's move forward with it. I think we as a board have to look at the statute. That and, we and, and act, enact it as proposed and suggest the town meeting take favorable action in June, town meeting to do it, and then uh, yeah. have the meeting with the business community and say, this is what we just put in place. Just a little fair warning, this is what's coming. And uh, you have an opportunity before this next snowstorm to come up with some other proposals that we can consider and amend the bylaw again if they come up with a better idea. Otherwise, let's just be done with it, move on. Okay. Give them the opportunity for October town meeting for any proposals they want to bring forward. But I'll take the motion then. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 26, Amend Code, General Bylaw, Snow Removal on Streets and Sidewalks. Second. I got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Unanimous. Uh, no. No? Oh. no. Four to one. Yeah. Who voted no? I'm sorry. Andy. Okay. Yep. Only for the purposes I think we need to address. No, no, I, I, yeah. I just wasn't paying attention to who voted no. You get your homework assignment, Mr. Schultz. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I believe we're up to the last article. 28. Second, excuse me, second to last article, which the planning, uh, town planner is for. Chief, thank you very much for your time this evening. And to the assistant finance director, um, unless you have another reason to be here, you certainly don't need to stay any longer. Thank you for your time and your help, Florian. Thank you. Um, so the next article, town planner is here to speak to it, and it relates to uh, mixed use overlay for uh, Main Street. And uh, Danielle's here to speak to the article. Danielle, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Chief. Come in. Um, so this is an article that came about as a result of um, some of the initial zoning changes that the CPC had proposed last October that um, changed and updated some of the zoning along Route 28. Um, our goal was to try to um, unlock some of the development potential along Route 28, try to make it a little bit easier to develop in a, in a productive way. Um, one of the things that had been included originally back in October as part of the um, zoning change article at town meeting was to allow for um, multifamily residential as a component of mixed use development along the corridor. As we approached town meeting last October, um, we thought that that might be allowing a lot of residential potentially to all of Route 28 um, and that we should back away from that. So what we did was we eliminated that provision from that particular article back in October. And what we said we wanted to do was to come back at the next town meeting um, to approach this in a more limited way. So we chose, um, we selected parcels in the vicinity of um, Winter Street that um, we would like to, to, to target for um, an overlay district where on only these parcels um, would, uh, would residential multifamily be allowed as part of a mixed unit, uh, a part of a mixed use development plan. So really what this would achieve would be um, for any of these parcels that might, um, you know, be proposed for redevelopment, um, you wouldn't have a situation where you would have all condos or apartments, but you could have a situation where you might have 80% of that land area, um, up to 80% um, devoted to multifamily residential use. And you could have multiple buildings on the property, you could have first floor, commercial, upstairs, residential. We didn't want to control it too carefully because often a, a lot of towns have passed um, zoning bylaws that require first floor um, uh, um, retail and um, residential on the upper floors and sometimes it can be very difficult we didn't want to impose that if it wasn't realistic but we wanted to offer it as an option so um, that's uh, the basis of the proposal for the overlay um, it was really just uh, trying to think through a little bit more carefully something that had been initially proposed in October that but we thought deserved a little bit more thought um, are there any questions D just the uh, so specific parcels have been called out right. and that was based upon that was based upon a location where we thought that um, revitalizing a portion of Main Street was most important and would be the best place to start so the vicinity of Route 62 where it crosses um, Main Street um, has been targeted for a number of planning initiatives um, one uh, you know streetscape improvement um, study that we did a couple of years ago, um, short-term economic development strategy for Main Street focused on that area as well. That seemed to be the area where we have a, a larger number of bigger under, underutilized 
parcels where we have done some outreach to some of the property owners and we have heard some feedback that we might do a little bit more with our property if we had different zoning, um, the option to um, have additional uses, the option for mixed use. Um, so uh, that's also the target area for the um, wastewater study that we're looking at. It's, it's the exact same parcels that are being talked about for um, looking at shared package treatment um, wastewater. So that area is, has really been a focus of, you know, let's start to see if we can develop some kind of part of of Route 28 that could act like an actual Main Street, feel like a little bit more of a, of a downtown area, um, and to really try to focus our efforts there, and, and, and depending on what we see as a result of that, potentially explaining that to other nodes along Main Street, but that seemed to be the area that um, you know stood out as, as having the biggest potential to start with. It's between Lowell Street and Winter Street. Um, so this, um, these parcels, that was the, that was the target area have, for see, the economic development. Um, Which one's, uh, is it in the? Oh, it, oh, it sorry. <laughs> it's not in here. I do. It's it's not on the screen, but no. yeah, these are the parcels. Um, so it's not that whole stretch. It's not all the way up to Lowell, but it goes from Winter Street, um, the Stop and Shop property, the Heffron property, um, Kitties. If any of those property owners decided that they wanted to do more with the property or expand in any way. Um, we wanted to offer opportunities for them to be able to, to do that because currently, you know, the, the regulations have been a little bit um, hindering. Um, you know, we have gotten questions over the years from developers who've said, well, if we wanted to do apartments above and, you know, retail on the first floor, or office on the first floor, could we do that? And the answer has always been no. So, you know, we wanted to present the opportunity. We don't necessarily have any illusions that it will create. Um, a giant boom overnight, but we wanted to be able to to to, to offer this as you know. So, 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 so this, this looks like it's, it's from Hashem's property mm -hmm. south to where Stop and Shop is. Yes, um, and uh, and it's a little bit around like the there's the, the car wash property is. No, I'm there. talking. Um, I'm talking. This that whole stretch of road. Yeah. On the, on the easterly side of 28. Mm -hmm. Nothing on the westerly side. Not yet. I think that if. Um, we wanted to see how this was received and how things started to progress. And if we started to hear feedback that people would be interested in looking at the westerly side, then I think that would be the next. Well, excuse step. me, wouldn't there be some property on the westerly side that would more than likely be that are very underutilized? There uh, are. There are a number of properties underutilized that might tick up before Kitty's moves. I don't know the answer to that. Um, only that. I mean, this, I think in the CPC's thinking, they have had their eye on that block for a really long time. I mean, I, I don't disagree with the, mm -hmm. with the whole stop and shop, have for property, mm -hmm. you know, and take in the, um, the mobile homes and cow wash and you know, that whole block. Mm -hmm. that, that's fine, but I'm just, uh, I guess I'm a, a little bit surprised that it isn't a more, little more expansive, you know, go, go up to, you know, Nick O'Brien's property and go across the street to where the gas station, that huge lot is, and where the other mobile homes are. I, I know what you're saying, and I, I think that those are good target areas for it, too. I, I think, think the whole area is target, but I think yeah. all the way down, you know, Reading Lumber property, all of it. I, I uh, agree. I think, though, that we were a little bit hesitant. It's been many years since residential of any kind was allowed on Main Street, and initially the feedback that I was getting when I first started here and I first started to talk about whether we could try to introduce some kind of mixed use along Main Street was was pretty negative. We didn't want to provide the opportunity for too much residential is what, what I was hearing. I don't know that that's necessarily the prevailing opinion anymore. I think things have evolved in terms of our willingness to see residential development as being a good component of economic development. I think the CPC's thought was um, to start smaller and to not propose so many parcels that could potentially have residential development that people got nervous about the potential impacts that it could create. So we wanted to sort of take a conservative approach as the first step. But I definitely agree with you. I think that those would be great areas to, to target next if this goes well and we get what we want from it. Um, certainly would be a great thing to talk about in the future. So I just continue, Mr. Yes. Chairman. I mean, former Chairman and I, Town Administrator met with Secretary Ashen in Representative Jones' office. You know, he had asked us a little bit about what else was going, going on, and we talked about, you know, this initiative, and 
to the, your very point, I said, I believe that the community's thought processes in relation to what they wanted before and what they find acceptable today are very different. You know, I haven't grown up and lived in town basically my whole life. Uh, I think people are more than willing to consider, you know, combination retail residential uh, development. And, and in this particular targeted area today, I just thought that maybe the proposal would have been more inclusive of this whole targeted area going forward rather than well, maybe think, a third of it, you know? I think one of the reasons it is limited in geography also is because it also coincides with the parcels we're looking at for shared wastewater. And I think the thought was that without a wastewater solution, it, it might just practical standpoint be really hard to do, to do too much redevelopment on the other properties. I think we'll have a lot more information in a few months once that study really gets underway and also to see what the response is to, to this zoning effort. I think we were afraid to propose too much that um, would, you know, like I said, promote uh, or would, would introduce the idea that we could get a lot of new residential overnight, which I don't think would necessarily happen anyway. No, no, and I think that could be controlled through mm -hmm. the zoning. Again, if you have a certain percentage of whatever the parcel is going to be and how much is going to be residential and how much right. needs to be retail, <coughs> I think that's where the town takes control of, of really what happens rather than a bunch of apartment buildings or cars. Right. So it was capped at 80 percent, which is still that's a, pretty high. a lot. That's it's substantial. still a lot, but we had to make sure that we didn't limit that percentage too much because then any, any individual property owner who might be thinking of doing a redevelopment, if we limited it to say 50 percent or 40 percent, we were afraid that that was too much of a disincentive and that it wouldn't be financially worth their while. So the CPC talked about what the right number was for a while and, and they, they thought that 80 percent seemed reasonable to give an opportunity for people to do a decent development proposal for it to be worth their while but for it not to be given giving over all of that land to commercial development i think there is a lot of um, hesitation about giving over giving up too much of our developable land area to residential i don't know if it's always justified but recognizing that that has been feedback that's been heard over the years they they just wanted to take um a more a more measured approach to it but i definitely agree that it's worth looking at I'm just curious too because it, it just seems like this was done just for these looks like 10 parcels um, but it's referencing in the warrant article studies that were done and did the studies only come up with that it, it would only be um, feasible for these or fe I don't want to use the word feasible but it, it just seems uh, as to Mr. O'Leary's point, why wouldn't it just be expanded even across the street in this s tiny stretch, just directed at these 10 parcels? What did the studies say with regard to that? Not across the way or? No, um, we haven't really gotten as far as, so the, I, I think because that limited area was, so when we did the economic, de the short-term economic development study for Route 28, it focused on a, a, a larger area. The CPC talked about including that whole larger area in their wastewater study that they're getting underway now. Right. And they decided it was too big an area. It just wasn't practical. It, it would be unlikely that we would be able to get all those properties in there. So, so they wanted the zoning proposal to really match the parcels that were looked at for wastewater. Now, once we finish that study, it, it may show us that there's no need to limit it, and maybe we really should look at what's around it, and I think that that would be maybe a next step, but they didn't, they just didn't want to start with too, too large an area. So we don't even have that study, but we're moving forward with the zoning bylaw overlay for something we don't even have a study finished on then. That's no, what it sounds I, like. I, and I if this is, no, I mean, it's, it's essentially saying it's a recommendation by the local regional planning agency based on planning studies and recommendations. Right. Not that study. The study I'm talking about in the warrant article is um, the, the short-term economic development study, which um, talks about that general area. I think the regional planning agency wanted to make a recommendation for a lot more residential than we necessarily heard the public was um, ready to to take on. Mm. Um, I think the, the MAPC would have loved to see us um, rezone all of Main Street so that every parcel allowed residential. I think the CPC was a little bit hesitant to do that right away. But well, I think they were very open to doing it in the future. Right. But by proving this zoning, it's just a start. 
you know, we could be back here in October discussing expanding it or in a year from now, next June. I think this is a great start. I think there's a study that backs up the rationale why you picked this particular area. Um, and then as you complete the wastewater study, uh, I think it will give you more rationale to expand this. But I don't, I don't think voting this tonight or voting for it at a town meeting in June is a negative. I think it's a good starting point. It's not the end point, I guess, the point I want to make. Would you agree? I agree, absolutely. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, and again, I, I, I don't have the necessarily a requisite background, probably, but to me, 80% residential on the, some of these parcels seems, just on the face of it, high, if, depending upon what we're looking to do. You know, if you're looking for, you know, you know, boutique shops and, you know, coffee shops and things of that nature. You know, people go in uh, downtown. I mean, you're only going to leave 20% for that type of development to be supported by some residential people in the area. I mean, I can foresee potentially that maybe that number is too high and it's going to serve as an impetus to get things going, but now the people across the street, because of the timing of the zoning, won't have the same opportunity uh, to maximize the value of the property from a residential standpoint that others will, you know, and, and should we have a better idea as to what the happy medium is based upon what's happened in other communities? I didn't get it. Maybe it is 80%, but I still find that to be extraordinarily high, just on the face of it, and I may be all wet. I'm going to allow Mrs. McKnight to respond for us. Sure you like. yes, multi-story in order to achieve 80%, right? Not necessarily. Do you have a response from Mr. O'Leary? Sure. So the CPC had talked about this, um, and a, a couple of the members who had had a little bit more knowledge and experience with, with development projects really felt that you had to give people up to 80% if they wanted it to make their projects work, that, it, that less than that might just not yield much of anything. Um, certainly a project wouldn't have to be 80% if it was, you know, we've heard from a couple of property owners who have said, I wouldn't mind doing 50% because I wouldn't. I would want to have an apartment or two above, you know, a business. Um, I've heard that feedback before. Um, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily expect every project to be 80% to be up to that height. But um, the CPC felt it was really important to offer that. Otherwise, we might not see anything really significant. Um, I know Reading has two of these right now. There's one where the old post office, well, the post office is, and that's actually being knocked down and they're going to have like underground parking and retail and restaurants they're going to have like three or four stories of condos they're going to sell over the top they also have one where certainly wood was right kind of by the train station there and off of haven street Atlantic, yeah. that's coming in as well and they, they have found that they're generally apartments over the top and they don't drain the schools uh and it also from a retail standpoint you have a, a warm market for your businesses on the first floor you have all these people living above you they're going to come down and use the, the coffee shop, the restaurant, whatever the case may be. I do agree with Mr. O'Leary, though, in the sense that it does seem like we're just singling out one side of the road there and it not expanding into a greater area. Do we have a timetable on when it would be expanded out to other? I know sewerage is the key for any of these things. They're wastewater issues, but. You know, we could expand it to the other side. I mean, even the next town meeting, if there really seemed to be an appetite for that, I think for a long time, though, the CPC had really been operating under the assumption that um, residential was something people were really nervous about seeing on Main Street. That has been the tradition for a yeah. long, long time. And I think it's great that things are evolving, but I think there was some real fear that there would be no chance of getting a zoning article passed if we included too many properties. I think it would be a great idea to include both sides of the street, and I'm pretty sure the CPC would agree with me about that. Um, in terms of a timetable, I mean, if I were to take feedback back to them to say, look, there seems to be a lot of enthusiasm for expanding this area and for including both sides of the street, I would have no doubt that, that you know, we, would, we could come back in October with the same thing um, for some selected parcels on the other side of the street. Just one more quick question, but so because it's zone, you did have public hearings and got public feedback on the eighty percent residential, twenty percent commercial, right? So we did back in October when this was part of the entire corridor rezoning, um, and we had at least one 
property owner come to kind of help us with the with the 80 percent number and who gave feedback that that they were were in favor of it we didn't hear anyone say that they were not in favor of it and at that time it was proposed for the whole corridor so i guess that does tell us something that there doesn't seem to be very significant opposition to that which i think is great um, this time around we have our public hearing scheduled for uh, may 16th so we have not yet heard that um, so we will have the public hearing and of course the CPC would listen to any public feedback that's that's received at that time and consider it. Any more questions? Motion? Just I, I yeah, should, sure. maybe, maybe a comment. It, 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 to, to me, this is something that I think we need to talk about too as far as uh, utilizing potential resources that are coming in. And uh, we touched on it briefly in the last meeting whereby, you know, we, meaning the town, may need to serve as an impetus for development there through acquisition of property to build a package treatment plant to allow people to tie in and do, do the form of a, you know, betterment charges or uh, usage charges just to, to get it going. Um, and I don't know if that's been part of the discussion with the Planning Commission or not. I'm sorry, you mean in terms of the town investing or the town? The town investing, not just in the study and mm -hmm. where it should be, but actually purchasing and building so far I think the CPC has been going on the assumption that we would like to lead the way with figuring out whether this is feasible but that we were not necessarily thinking of asking for town money for it but that we were hoping to tap private resources for that in terms of businesses what is the, what is the, mm -hmm. the the thought process that's gone into this in thinking that a private property owner would be willing to build a package treatment plan on their property rather than the 80% residential usage uh, building themselves? Well, I think it would, well, depending on what the feasibility study tells us, it, it could potentially really increase um, the type of development and the amount of development, the intensity of, de of development that, that a property owner could do on their own property. So, for example, if a private property owner could have the opportunity to tie into a private system, and that system isn't necessarily located on their property, but maybe it's adjacent to their property, um, they wouldn't have to give over a large portion of their parcel if they didn't have the space. No, but they then they, they fall victim to, right. to private enterprise and user fees and usury charges, you know, based upon the other private owner who built the plant. They're you know, going to want to wait until the sewer comes through. You know, so it, rather than that, you know, why wouldn't the town consider investing to promote the economic development in a more uh, timely and measured approach? It might. I, I think that... Um, but I, I'm just trying to think, you know, no, what's going to you, entice people? Don't. Why am I going to build it if I have to pay my neighbor to use mm -hmm. this package treatment plant? And I'm at, you know... They're probably going to wait until they hope the sewer comes down 28 someday. That's what they're all going right. to hold off for. So cost may not be much different. Yeah. I don't know. Well, to wait for a sewer to come down 28, I mean, we'd be waiting a long time. I think the, the CPC's purpose in, in trying to figure out whether this could be something that was done privately would be um, because it would be something that could be accomplished within a few years, whereas we, we know we're not getting a sewer down Route 28 in the next few years. Um, so we wanted to give um, some means for property owners to actually do development that, that they would like to do rather than saying, well, maybe 15 years or 20 years or never. Um, Right. And then, in the meantime, I just holding on to, um, just holding on to their properties and, and and not doing what they otherwise may do. I, I think it's a really interesting thought to well, have the I'm town. I'm just looking at the parcels themselves, you know, and how many of these parcels are actually capable of putting a package treatment plant in there and building a development of any substance or size, you know. Stop and shop. Stop and shop. Mm -hmm. Backside of kitties, yeah. park a lot. Um, that's about it. And, that's uh, about it on that map. And where Papa Gino sits high up high on the hill, you know. Mm -hmm. and the, the, really, the, the, the opportunity to, to service the proposal appears to be limited. Well, I think the idea would be for the smaller properties to be able to benefit, even if they're not big enough to have their own system. Mm -hmm. right. You're right, it is limited. It's a small geographic area. Um, the study is really a, 
It's more of a pilot, though I think even if we got feedback back from that study that says, look, it's really not feasible, it's too expensive and no one will be interested, even if we got that feedback, I think we would still really want to change the zoning to allow for something that if, if a developer could make it work, great. I mean, you know, it's not the likeliest spot on Route 28 for somebody to put in a restaurant, but people have. So yes, we would like to make this easier for them, but even if, you know, when we, at the completion of the study, if it looks like it's not great, we, we still want to rezone these articles. We, we still think that the introduction of multifamily residential as this component of mixed use development is a, can be a real catalyst for revitalizing. It's a great start. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Mullen. I think one of the things that Rich Walden group spoke about last week also and when they talked about possibly adding the intergenerational center to the town hall. We talked about Green Street and other some things that if this happens, we can look for places for seniors also, whether it's seniors that are renting upstairs, up top is remember, we go back to there's no place for seniors to go other than out of town. So if we talk about the whole where the town hall goes, if you sell this piece of property, you do have to open up Main Street. And I think what Danielle is saying is let's start with some, this is what CPC is comfortable with. This is what, they, you know, if it's a whole street, great. But if they're only comfortable starting with part of it, the rest of the business pool is on Main, on Main Street. You're going to say, I like what you did when we talked about it. I was thinking if I can do that on my property. And it's a way, again, to get homes for seniors to move into, apartments for seniors to move into. And maybe we find a piece of property that the town hall, the fire station, an intergenerational center goes, if that's part of it. And, you know, people start looking at the property now and say, I own it on Main Street. Maybe I'm better off selling it, taking some uh, money from it, retiring, and you see something else that can be built on Main Street. But I think Danielle's been working on it for a long time in the CPC. I'd be willing to go with what the CPC is comfortable with at this point. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Does anyone have any more questions? Do you, you want to maybe just do a quick poll of the members to see where we're at? I, I mean, to me, I, I'm not willing to make, make a recommendation tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. We're happy to see how the public hearing goes and see if there's any additional tweaking, maybe. And, and again, is the article just these parcels, or is it wide open? The article is just those parcels. So at this point, we have advertised only those parcels. I think if we wanted to expand it, we would have to do that at the next town meeting. Mr. Mosseri, what do you think? You asking me? He likes the other side of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know I, 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 I look know. at the property layout. I look yeah. at the property across the street. I think it's good. It's a better location. Better for potential. Can I, stuff. can I add one thing actually as we're talking about this? Um, the stop and shop property has been the focus, uh, a focus of the CPC for a while and changing the zoning and doing this wastewater study are two things that the CPC has been hoping would allow us to provide a better alternative scenario for development of that property. We, one of our goals is to be able to go to them and say, look, look what you can now do with your property. You've got this great piece of property that you're sitting on. We have new zoning that will allow you to, they were, a stop and shop is actually, was excited when we went to them and told them that we were interested in allowing residential on that property, which had never been an option before. They were receptive to that. Um, and to, show them there could be some alternative to what is there right now. That has always been the CPC's hope. No one knows whether that will work, but we, we have wanted to include that property <coughs> because it's, it's large, it's significant, people ask about it all the time, it has a lot of potential, it has good soil. I, it just, there are so many reasons why we would want to try to encourage redevelopment of it. So that's one reason for why that side of the street. Sorry, I, my allergies have been bothering me. I had a little bloody nose there, so I, oh. I had to excuse myself. So where did we get to, um, Mr. Schultz? Yeah, I, I would recommend it at the town meeting, but I agree with, with the caveat. I agree with Mr. O'Leary that it, this should just be a starting point. We should expand this, but I, I don't want to set us back. And I'm just, again, one vote of five. I would recommend it at this town meeting, but I think we have to expand it to other, certainly the other side of the road in that area. That would be my only Okay. Thought. I, I agree. I, I, do, I agree with Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Schultz. I think it's something that we have to wait to hear what the members of the public, public have to say, because even 
with regard to the JT Berry, there was a huge concern with residential and the drive was commercial, 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 and there was a m major concern about not focusing on that and focusing on residential and where this is an 80-20 split. I think we would want to hear from members of the public, not the business owners, but members of the public on how they perceive that and whether they perceive that as, you know, impacting their way of living here. So I would, I'd be in favor of waiting until town meeting, until after your hearing. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at too at this point. We've got, this is the first yep. real discussion we've had of this. No, and I think and, uh, with the CPC. There'll be a public hearing, right? Yeah, well, they're going to have, they're going to have a public hearing. Next. On the 16th. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking about. They, they're going to have one. And we meet again on... Uh, 22nd. 22nd. So you so. want to recommend a town meeting for purposes tonight? Uh, or is that what uh, Yes, because we have to get this printed. We'll do that. Yeah. But I will just say, you know, the 80% on all the discussions and the meetings we went to is, is really the, the ceiling. And, you know, there was a lot of discussion about really a lot less than 80% at least from the, the feedback that we were getting. Um, I think it gives us the flexibility, but I agree. Let's get the feedback. I don't believe that, at least myself, I can only speak for myself, that the feedback of this board would be that you really wanted to expand this initially. So you can kind of blame that on me. I got the sense that we weren't looking to drive this forward. I was probably one of the, the voices in that room said, Let's start small and grow it as we see. I, I'm not sure my board would have the stomach to see this tremendous widespread residential approach to it. So uh, by all means, uh, we can wait until town meeting. And But I think we'd be cool. maybe if we all could make the commitment to make the, uh, the public hearing, then you'd be able to hear for yourself and maybe even share your own thoughts. Okay, so we'll, we'll take the recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 27, amend code, zoning bylaws, Article 26, Main Street, mixed use overlay. Is it 27, right? Uh, does the Roman numeral say 26 if I'm a Roman numeral? Addition is correct. It's 27. Sorry. No, that, that, that's Article 26 of the zoning bylaws. Yeah, that's but the bylaws. But it's Article 27 in the warrant. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I have a second? Second. I have a second. Do I have any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So I'm sorry, recommendation to be made at town meeting, is that yes. what you said? Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for staying but so late. But I wouldn't say that you got unfavorable feedback. I wouldn't say that you got unfavorable feedback. No, right, no, right, I no, I agree. Yet, so. I actually didn't realize I was presenting on this. I just thought, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I wasn't proud of this. You can see the thing. That's all right. Well, that's good. I'm glad we got a, a willingness to uh, see us expand on this. Okay, last article. Article 28 relative to the naming of the distance learning lab at North Reading Middle and High School. And this article would name the distance learning lab in honor of former superintendent of schools, Dr. David S. Troughton. And this was submitted by the school committee. So the BOS recommends at town meeting. We already did this one? Yeah. Have we moved on this already? I think so. I the name we have it on the list for tonight. Yeah. 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 So you approved to put it on the warrant because they missed the deadline. Mm -hmm. so. Does the board wish to maintain recommendation at town meeting? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm sure they voted. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 28, authorized naming of distance learning lab at North Reading Middle slash High School. Second. 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 Second by mm -hmm. Mr. Masseri. Any more discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that concludes the warrant articles. One just thing on the warrant, too, it's my last name is spelled wrong on the actual warrant. Not that. Yeah, we do that to the first year of right. Mine is two, so don't worry about That's it. That's good. Well, we can fix it. We still have the chance to fix it, right? The printed warrant, we can fix it. Okay. The one that's mailed to the homes. They just forgot to see. Make it feel better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, uh, next agenda item is the approve the FY. 2018 health insurance changes. Mr. Goldberto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the board knows, uh, the town has been meeting with its collective bargaining units over the past three or so months. Uh, some uh, 
four or five meetings relative to health insurance for fiscal year 2018, um, and an additional three uh, meetings held open to all town, town and school department employees over that period of time. Um, and it's with regard to changes for the health plan for fiscal year 2018. Um, I think we had a meeting back in January where we presented that we had been afforded um, information from our current health insurance carrier that we should expect a 10% or greater increase in the premium for fiscal year 2018. And in discussions with our insurance advisory committee and the representatives of the various collective bargaining units, uh, we elected to solicit bids from the market relative to health insurance to consider a potential change in carrier. That 10% or uh, that approximate 10% increase from our existing carrier was affirmed through that procurement process through a, through a bid that was submitted by the carrier. And we received a couple of other bids, one of which was from a new carrier, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, with a, a forecasted premium increase of 2.5% for fiscal year 2018. That seven and a half percentage point difference uh, represents uh, over, um, over $300,000 with regard to premium savings and with regard to town budgetary savings as well. Um, in addition to that, we've been in a discussion with the, our representative units, collective bargaining units, relative to a creative financing model known as a participating funding arrangement, uh, whereby we uh, purchase a higher deductible plan from Blue Cross and then effectively set up a uh, self-funded pool to reduce that deductible amount experienced by the employee to the current levels uh, that they're received at. And the, the advantage of this is that it further lowers the premium in the case of our overall health insurance costs projected to be approximately a 0.3 percentage point decrease. Um, but there's also an availability for additional savings beyond that decrease, depending upon how our claims perform over the next year. And the goal and the commitment that's been made is that the, any additional savings that's generated would be set aside to defray the cost of future health insurance expenses, both for the town and for its employees. Uh, and as the community may be aware, the town pays 70% of the premium, and our employees pay 30% for the HMO plans, and it's a 50-50 split for the PPO plans. So we believe uh, we are one of the first, if not the first, community in the state considering this option as a, a means for trying to control our health insurance expenses. And um, we've engaged in a very, um, very open discussion with the insurance advisory committee, the representatives of the various collective bargaining units, and our employees. Because this is new, and because this is something that there is not a whole lot of experience experiential evidence in the public sector on, uh, we've elected to uh, require that a bond be provided, much in the same way a bond is provided for a, uh, uh, a construction or other type of service contract that we might obtain. And it's effectively intended to guarantee the savings that we believe we'll receive beyond um, the uh, reduced premium from the uh, carrier's policy. Um, we went through a procurement process to identify a third-party administrator uh, who was uh, solicited a proposal that was consistent with what we believe the market would yield for such services. And uh, we're in the process of contracting with both that firm and with the carrier, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, so before the board this evening is uh, a vote to uh, approve and sign uh, memorandum of agreement between the town of North Reading and uh, each of the collective bargaining units representing employees here in uh, North Reading. Um, the, the units, the, the each unit has signed off on the agreement um, uh, with regard to uh, this transition. Um, without delving too far into the details, there are some other conversations that are taking place that would potentially supplement this agreement. Uh, but uh, at this point, we do have a signed memorandum of agreement from each unit, and we'd be asking the board to vote to approve and sign each agreement uh, at this evening's meeting. Board members, any discussion? Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, I just think it's, uh, again, this is, again, a combination of a, a lot of uh, uh, research and um, discussions and... Uh, Again, a new uh, 
blazing a new trail in relation to municipalities um, trying to mitigate the cost of uh, health insurance premiums uh, for their employees and retirees. Uh, so I, again, we're on the cutting edge of something here. It appears as though it's uh, economically far more feasible uh, for both the employee and the employer. Um, it uh, maintains a certain level of benefits that the uh, employees currently enjoy at a, at a lower cost. And I think it's uh, much to the credit of the employees for uh, their willingness to uh, being receptive to a different approach. Um, again, through lots of discussions, at least four or five different meetings with them. Um, and they've come to the, the conclusion that uh, this board, board proposed and uh, supports wholeheartedly. So I think it's a, it's a great step, and I think you're going to see a lot more municipalities in the Commonwealth following this model. Um, to the town administrator's point, you know, most of our concerns were in relation to the ability to have this process perform. We're putting up a bond to make sure that we limit our exposure and uh, bring forth the guarantees that we're hoping to uh, enjoy in relation to uh, stabilizing these rates. And again, any realized savings are going to be put aside to uh, mitigate next year's premiums and uh, future premiums. So I, I, I applaud the employees' uh, willingness to, to sit down and work this out with us. I applaud uh, the board's efforts and the administration's efforts to, uh, to move forward in this, this vein. I think, it's, I think it's cutting edge and it's great. Mr. Masseri. Just ditto on uh, Steve's uh, comments. And I, I, I really, you know, if you go back to the history of doing this on an annual basis, it was done right this time, exclusive of the, the plan. But in terms of the presentation, in terms of, you know, getting the, uh, the whole insurance advisory committee, looking at it, explaining it, and it wasn't an easy thing. It took several meetings. And the fact that they all signed it, uh, you know, I think uh, I applaud them for that commitment. And uh, I do know there's been some questions, but I think it's more understanding, not so much uh, in terms of getting a little better understanding of what happens when this goes on and so on and so forth. And I, I think they were looking for some kind of a view of, uh, you know, how much money was being <coughs> put out each month or quarter. So they had some idea and visibility of, you know, what game might we have at the end of the year. So, we, you know, with that, uh, I would recommend that uh, we move forward with this. Any other point you want to say? Well, I think it's a win-win for both sides. Yeah. You know, I think it's a concept that you have to, you definitely have to see it a few times to understand it and fully grasp it. But it is cutting edge, and, uh, and I'm, I think it's wonderful this board is willing to reach out a little bit and uh, test the waters with this approach. And I think they're going to see them when we get through the other side of this. It's going to be beneficial because you could see what's happening in our federal government with the health care. It's a little out of control. I don't think anybody has any real solid answers. And I think our approach and what we're doing here locally is a solid approach. And we vetted it. We've tried to make sure we've managed our risk <coughs> and you know the worst case scenario we get through the other side on this next year and we can go back to the traditional method but the traditional method is just the definition of insanity so we're just going back to doing the same thing over and over again we're going to be dealing with seven and ten and twelve and thirteen percent increases every year I love this that and we're doing this together collectively we get the unions on board with us we we'll get through this process and come out the other end and I think everyone will see the benefit of it I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm, I'm going to only give you about two minutes, though, if you don't mind. If you could just come up to the podium. Just name and address, please, for the folks at home. Yes, Loretta A. Capizzuto, 12 Duane Drive, as a citizen and also speaking on behalf of the North Reading Paraprofessionals, of which I was elected president, and I'm happy to be there for them. Without going into details, um, I know there were some concerns uh, with, with two parties. Mr. Gilberto knows this. Mr. Masseri, you know that. We met on Friday to talk about some of our concerns and to supplement um, an addendum. So I guess I'm 
uh, questioning if you all, Mr. Gilberto, you know, Mr. Macero, you know, but do the rest of you board members know what's contained in the MOA that we are draft the supplemental MOA that we're drafting, the teachers in the Paris? So the town administrator has been, and, and my fellow board members have been very good about sharing the information and making sure they're keeping us all <coughs> up to date. And I know that process is continuing, mm -hmm. but us delaying anything after tonight, beyond tonight would not be beneficial to anybody. I'm not suggesting for a second that we delay anything. Okay. I'm just concerned that, you know, there is a supplemental addendum to both of those parties. Sure. Mr. Gilberto. Sure, uh, you know, and without wanting to cloud any ongoing discussions, mm -hmm. obviously, I think it would be fair to say that there's been discussion with this board with regard to the concerns uh, related to the plan design, for example, which we know is a concern, uh, with regard to uh, the bond, mm -hmm. which we know is a concern as well, um, and with regard to the financial model and the, how it works. Um, that information's all been provided to the board in terms of what's under discussion. Um, I'm not really comfortable saying much more than that in open session, but. Uh, That's okay. Yes. Again, you know, we don't um, dispute the plan. We, we like the plan, but we were just concerned that there were a few holes that sure. just more for protection, more for protection. Um, I'm speaking again for, our, for my membership, that there were just a lot of unanswered questions. And as long as those addendums are being addressed, we're okay with it, but we just wanted to raise that concern. No, and I think you've seen a pattern right now that we've been continuing to try to work, provide as much information. we've provided a lot of opportunity for communication and we want to continue on that road. I don't see us changing that path at all. So you have our commitment. We're going to work as hard as we can. And we, we appreciate the commitment that the uh, employees have made as well. Mm -hmm. we, we all agree that you know this is a leap of faith for all of us, not yep. just for me and my membership, but for every town employee yep. who carries this insurance. It's a leap of faith. We get it. It's a risk. It's a risk we're willing to take, but we just want to be sure that we're all protected. Thank you. Appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you, Lori. Okay. With that said, I'll take a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the fiscal year 2018 health insurance changes and to sign the memorandum of agreement between the town of North Reading and the town's employee representatives. Second. 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 By Mr. O'Leary. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Should be 30 documents. All right. So for each. we are Who down to set up, set an upcoming uh, meeting I'll schedule. Take a half a dozen. We'll take out like 30 of them. Oh, do we have something else? We have the documents to be, to be signed. Oh yes. So but in the meantime. Uh, all right. So let's see. We'll split them up a little bit and sure. circle them back. Yeah. While we're distributing. We're at the point where we're going to look at some upcoming meeting schedules. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you, I uh, believe the board has uh, already set a meeting schedule moving for the next month with a meeting this evening and then a meeting on Monday, May 22nd, which will also be the warrant article hearing for the town meeting. And then on Monday, June 5th, we have town meeting at which there'll be a meeting, potentially a pre-meeting, um, potentially not a pre-meeting that evening. And then um, based on that meeting taking place on the 5th, our recommendation would be for a uh, meeting to take place on um, two weeks later on Monday, June 19th. That would also be the uh, water rate hearing that evening. And we believe Reading Municipal Light Department will be here to present as well with their, their regular update as to uh, items ongoing. Um, with regard to the projection, based on the way the schedule fell at the moment, we are proposing, and this is obviously subject to the board's input, but one meeting in July and uh, one meeting in August. The July meeting being on Monday, July 17th, and the August meeting being on Monday, August 21st. Um, certainly that's open to the board's discussion, and certainly that's something that can be revisited after town meeting if that's the desire of the board. With regard to, and, and this is also based on the number of meetings that we've had over the past four or five months due to a variety of issues that are ongoing. Um, we would then have uh, on that August 21st meeting. It's time to uh, it's time to work out 
with the uh, submission of warrant articles and the deadline for the submission of October Town Meeting warrant articles. The board would be asked to sign the October Town Meeting warrant on Tuesday, September 5th, which is the Tuesday following the uh, Labor Day holiday, and then have informational hearings on Monday, September 18th. And then the town meeting would take place on October 2nd, and then there would be a meeting the third Monday on October 16th, and then meetings on November 16th, 6th and 20th, and December 4th and 18th, as identified in the packet. So this is a draft that we put together based on the way the calendar falls, based on the deadlines associated with the October town meeting, and based on the upcoming June town meeting, just as a starting point for the board's consideration. Is that the meeting packet, Mike? It is, yes. Uh, it's, uh, if you're scrolling through, it's, it's marked number 12, and it's after the legal bills. Um, if you scroll to the very end and then go back, I think it's four pages, you'll see it. Thank you. All right, so. So we're going to have a board meeting on the 19th. And then we're going to have RMLD in that, in that evening. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and that would also be the evening for the water rate hearing. Anybody have any conflicts with June 19th? None? I don't hear any. No, 19th so sounds good. July 17th, we would have almost a month break. Looks like Probably a much needed long. break. Yep. You don't foresee a meeting necessary between that, right, Gilbert? Uh, at, at the moment, no. I mean, the one thing that can obviously always change things is uh, the submission of a license application that requires a timely action by the board. But uh, you're know, looking at the calendar, we didn't no, feel it's gonna go that a way. meeting on July 3rd was appropriate, you obviously. Hold that. I know. Uh, and, um, no, I need those. We could have looked to the 10th, but we opted for trying to stagger the meetings uh, for having one in July, one in August. Okay. What is it? So, um, July 19th. Yeah, it's looking your drop on. Nope. Yeah. July 19th or July 19th? July 17th. Is, so we go from June 19th, which we the meeting at the town meeting, to July 17th. I know it's a vacation month, so if you have any conflicts, Mr. Schultz? Uh, I'm good to spend Mr. Uh, Mr. Larry, you good on the 19th and the 20 and the 17th of July? 19th of June? Is it right? Yeah, yeah, 19th of June sounds good. And then August 21st. I might have an issue with this. I have no idea. <laughs> you said to go that way. I have an issue with that one. 21st, you said? Uh, it would be the 21st of August. Mm -hmm. And that would also be the deadline for warrant article submission for the October 10th meeting. Also that way. This one's and, uh, done. 6 uh, Just for the record. Okay. Okay. So and then nine, 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 five. Yeah, we got to eat them now. Okay. August 21st. Good. September 5th. It's a Tuesday. I have to check with my social director on these things. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing is in stone. I think what we'll do is I do that. it's in your meeting packet. Take it home. Take a look at it. We meet here again. I think it's probably more coming Steve. back on yes. June twenty second. Steve, why don't we lock in at least the next four, five meetings mm -hmm. at our next meeting? Take these home. Talk to your significant others. We know they make the decisions, uh, and we'll finalize it the next no. meeting. So if we could add this back on the meeting, each other. Sure. Jennifer. Yeah. Okay. Town administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Two items to report. First, I'm pleased to report that the North Reading Police Department has been awarded reaccreditation by the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission. Uh, and attached was a media release, which I believe you may have all seen. I just want to congratulate the chief and uh, his uh, command staff and the officers who are involved in um, preparing for that process, which was, in it, which was conducted in January earlier this year. Uh, congratulations to them. 
Second, I did receive a resident inquiry regarding signage and intermittent access road closures at the Midland High School campus. Those closures are associated with warranted repairs to the drainage on the school campus and are not being performed at added town expense to answer the question that's come up. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes my comment. I uh, would make one, make one note that you and I were uh, alerted by town council as to an item for old and new business, and we yep. did have a motion that we put in the packet for this evening, which I'm happy to speak to unless you would like to. Uh, no, if you go ahead, and I'm going to keep signing sure. if you wouldn't mind. And um, Mr. Schultz, do you have the motion? I do. You want to read it now? Or? No, I would okay. let the I would allow the sure. Allow so allow the town administrator. To. We were contacted by town council uh, late yesterday, a uh, Sunday. Um, relative to a request of Pulte Homes to uh, extend the 60-day title examination period provided for in Section 5A of the March 9, 2017 purchase, purchase and sale agreement for 104 Lowell Road. To, and that would be to an extension to May 15th, which would effectively be one more week. Um, it's not a sign of uh, a problem, but just of some additional work that they've asked for the courtesy of an extension of the time period. And um, based on the recommendation of town council, we're asking for a vote of the board. Uh, it was town council's suggestion that where the agenda was already posted to be considered under old and new business, and he did provide provide us a motion, which is in the meeting packet for this evening's updated meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to grant the request of Pulte Homes of New England Inc. to extend the 60-day title examination period provided in Section 5A of the March 9, 2017 Purchase and Sales Agreement for 104 Lowell Road to May 15, 2017. A second, second for discussion. Second, second by Mr. O'Leary. So discussion, board members? Hey, if they need a week, that's fine with me. Me too. <laughs> it's a tricky business. Um, yeah. Anybody have any concerns? I mean, they were moving right along. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have no concern with it. It's pretty normal in the industry. Okay. Then no other discussion? I'll take a vote. All those in, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And that brings us to old and new business for the board members. For the record, I believe that was considered under old and new business. Yes. Thank you. Additional old business. <coughs> Mr. O'Leary, would you mind? No. Um, first of all, I want to welcome Mr. Schultz to the board. Thank you, sir. I look forward to uh, working with you, and I think you'll find this to be a very rewarding and uh, time-consuming experience. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, welcome you, uh, welcome you aboard, and uh, again, offer anything I have to offer, I'm available. Uh, so welcome aboard, and look forward to working with you. Uh, the only other two things, again, is uh, something that's already been mentioned, a couple of things. One is um, passing of um, uh, finance director's father, you know, so again, my condolences to, uh, to Liz Rook and her family. And again, the passing of uh, Michelle Cronin, our employee, uh, the uh, van driver. <laughs> Uh, for our senior citizens, uh, what a personality. And um, you know, unfortunately, she's uh, had a bit of bad health and it finally got the best of her uh, this morning. Uh, but Michelle was uh, uh, truly someone who lit up the room. And uh, I know many of our seniors uh, truly appreciated, you know, not just the pick up or the drop off, but, you know, part of that job is to uh, check in on people and uh, get to know people and get to know that uh, people's situations are are okay or not okay, and uh, you know she did a lot of uh, a lot of good things for uh, residents in our community and a lot of wellness checks. And uh, again, uh, her presence is going to be sorely missed. And uh, uh, sad. I was saddened to hear the news this morning. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Masir. Uh, I just add uh, regarding Michelle, her personality. I think yeah. just made it for the kind of job that she had. Uh, and of course, uh, the surprise uh, passing was his father, and I know she, uh, Liz has worked so hard on the, the whole budget process, and got it to a point where the assistant uh, finance director was able to uh, pick up and uh, carry us forward to get things closed for this town meeting comes flying at us. I would also like to uh, thank uh, all the board members that were here prior to the election, including Mr. Yule for their support while I was chair. I think we accomplished a lot last year. And uh, Michael, uh, I wish 
you the very best in taking you, Mr. Mr. what we get started and moving it forward for another year. We have uh, a lot to do. And uh, I know that uh, you've got the energy and the focus to get it done. And Catherine, congratulations. And you got a lot of work to uh, support uh, our new uh, chairman. Thanks, Mr. Mr. And, uh, if anybody's looking for information that I might have over the years that I've collected, uh, just let me know. And uh, Michael's already done that once or twice. And uh, uh, I'd be happy to help you out. If someone wants to go through the budget process, and Andy, uh, I probably know as much about it as anyone else, so I'd be glad to help you out. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Masseri. Mr. I just want to take time to thank the voters who voted me in. I see one of my big supporters sitting on here in the audience here tonight, Ms. Mullen. And thank the board members for welcoming me as one of your own, and you guys have been great, and I look forward to serving the town with you guys. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to welcome Mr. Schultz and um, say I look forward to working with you, and uh, we are in a busy time, so we can definitely use your analytical skills. and. Thank you appreciate everyone who actually stepped up in this election and uh, one of the best things about being from this community is all the volunteer service all the civic service that people perform and provide and when I first run Chuck Carus Sorry, Carucci Steve. said that everyone should perform some sort of public civ civil service civic service so welcome and I uh, wish Mike the best of luck um, as he leads us in this busy time with a lot a lot of things that we have to work on that we get that we get the privilege to work on for the town and i also just wanted to say uh, kudos to the police department not only for the accreditation but for the um for their work that they did um, in really discovering this human trafficking organization and bringing them down and it was through their awareness and their vigilance, um, their community awareness is just as important as their situational awareness. I think this was the key to bringing that human trafficking ring that extended to another state down. So congratulate the detectives and the, the good leadership over there at the North Reading Police Department. Good comment. Thank you. First, I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be your chair. Uh, Mr. Masseri, I want to thank you for the many years you you sat here in this chair, and there's definitely large shoes to fill, but I'm going to need a lot of guidance and mentoring. And, but I do appreciate the opportunity, and I will work as hard as I can to uh, continue to keep us moving forward in the pace that you've started us at, Mr. Masseri. Um, I have a couple things. There is a, on May 18th, there is the CIT is going to be hosting up at the North Reading Middle School High School Performing Arts Center. They're going to have a Dr. Ruth Puti in, who is a national renowned expert in adolescent brain development and its impact on tween teen risk taking, including alcohol and substance abuse. So I really encourage the public to come out. And the flyer will be posted, I believe, here at Town Hall for more information and on the Community Impact Team website. Annual reports. The annual report is out. And you come down to Town Hall. Mrs. Brooks would love to see her uh, get her office back. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in one, come on down and grab them. Excellent job this year. I think this is one of the best uh, written with the most information I've seen. Uh, excellent job. Mr. Masseri did a great job on how the information that you wrote up in there. Thank you. We have Memorial Day coming up, Andy. We, we do March in the Parade, so that information will be coming available next meeting. A liaison assignments, I know that's the next thing, and I will get an email out this week and just show you guys what you had uh, last year and just give me some feedback on what you liked, what you want to change, what you would like to try, and Mr. Schultz. It'll have Mr. Yule's name on it, but clearly uh, those will be your spots, and we're going to go from I'm going to take your feedback, do the best I can. I may make a few little changes, but I'd like to try to keep, keep as much continuity on some of the 
some of the very larger. But it's good to move some things around. Uh, so I'll be getting that out over the next week or so. And again, to the North Reading Police Department on not only the detective work, but that accreditation, re-accreditation, re is, you know, we shouldn't just brush over it. If you go and look at the level of detail, it truly allows that chief to run his operation over there. It gives them organizational, clear guidelines and ch chain of command, his operating system, how it all comes together is through that accreditation. So I commend him and his staff for pulling that off. So I don't have anything else. Uh, if anyone else has any last second things, we'll, uh, I'll look for a motion for adjournment. Oh, one quick thing, Mr. Chairman, um, for everybody out there, the first North Reading Town Day is going to be June 11th. And I know they've already have about 50 or 60 booths already rented, so their space is running out. If you have a civic group, religious group, school group, restaurant, business, and you want to be there, make sure you sign up because they're going to run out of space. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. I got a motion. Okay. Second. Those are all five. Those are five. Mr. Misery. Adjourn. adjourn. All in favor? Stick around. <laughs> no, I'm adjourn. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.